It's that magic time of summer again. Time for golf at the Summit. In the U.S. Open and the British Open. And the PGA Championship. You'll see them all on ABC. First, the tournament to determine the champion of American golf for 1985. What is the U.S. Open? It's a face from half a world away, unknown to most American followers of the game. Popping out of the pack with a double eagle on the second hole of the first round, seizing the lead and holding it. T.C. Chen of Taiwan, trying to become the first champion of American golf, whose native tongue is not English. It's green grass, clipped as closely as the silken hairs on a thoroughbred racehorse's back. Grass rolled and spiked and pampered until a ball rolls truly into the hole when properly and perfectly struck. The U.S. Open is a shelf full of memories of the 19-year-old Horace Rollins winning the first one ever held at Newport in 1895. It's a gallery of tens of thousands streaming alongside the fairways on a warm summer day, loving the sun and the excitement and being part of it all. And one day, years from now, telling some small boy of the day they rub shoulders with Arnie or Jack or Lee or Tom, or perhaps with T.C. Chen. The Open is a lesson for living, of playing the ball as it lies, wherever that may be, of taking the penalty for a mistake without grumbling, of winning with grace, and losing with style. It's Fuzzy Zeller waving a towel in mock surrender at Wingfoot. And Tom Watson jumping for joy at Pebble Beach. It's Willie Anderson and Bobby Jones and Ben Hogan and Jack Nicholas, the only four-time winners. And it's Francis we met of long ago, a boyish amateur with a 10-year-old caddy beating the British heroes Barton and Ray and stamping golf as an American game. But it's Tony Manero, too, whose glory came and went with a single open, but whose neatly clipped mustache and happy smile can still be seen on any clubhouse wall where the open champion's pictures are displayed. The open is a picture swing and a plan gone wrong. It's a dream come true and a walk to glory. It's tradition and it's tomorrow and it's just what the name implies. It's open to any golfer. Young, like Lee Jansen, the youngest in this year's Open. Or old, like Gene Boric, dean of this year's competitors. It's a chance for an almost forgotten champion to come back. Andy North, in a slump since winning seven years ago, suddenly challenging for the title again. But it's T.C. Chen until someone proves otherwise. Is it possible? Will the new American champion be Chinese? All have tried, but only one will win. One name will join the others on the trophy. One face will join the others in the album. And we'll be here to see whose name and whose face it will be. ABC Sports and the United States Golf Association invite you to join us for the playing of the final round of the U.S. Open Golf Championship, played this year at the Oakland Hills Country Club in Birmingham, Michigan. And this is the live scene here at Oakland Hills. You never know what kind of a golfer is going to win when the Open comes here. In 1924, it was an unknown, slight Britisher named Cyril Walker. In 1937, it was a similarly unknown American, a youngster named Ralph Gouldall, who would go on to win the championship again the following year. In 1951, though, one of the great names in the history of the sport, Ben Hogan, repeating. But he was the last man to win this championship twice in a row. In 1961 here, it was Gene Littler. And now again, they have all come. Today, well, it's overcast again today, but there's no rain falling. The wind is still up. The temperature precisely the same as it was at this time yesterday. 62 degrees. The humidity is still high. Winds out of the west are a factor of 12 miles an hour, and they say a chance of showers, but it certainly doesn't look anything like as ominous as it was yesterday. 
The leader is still C. Chung Chen of Taiwan by two strokes only over Andy North of Madison, Wisconsin. Then Dave Barr of Canada, Rick Fair, the 22-year-old who was an amateur last year and tied for low amateur in this championship. Ayesteros of Spain and Tommy Kiten. Dennis Watson of South Africa, truly international leaderboard. These others still with some faint chance of winning. Lanny Watkins, who won the PGA. Payne Stewart, he of the plus fours on the fairways. Plus he's Zeller, the defender, and Ray Floyd, who's never won this, and all the others. Many names here from the PGA Tour. Familiar ones like Andy Bean, new ones like Corey Pavin and Joey Sindelar. Former champions like Hale Irwin. And you saw Greg Norman there, who tied for the title last year only to lose a playoff. Other names on the fourth page of the leaderboard. Well, I'm Jim McKay welcoming you to our coverage. Wall to wall again today. We'll be taking the leaders from the first tee until they put out on 18. Just all the way in the final round of the U.S. Open. It's been a fascinating story. We came here Thursday, and when a young man named T.C. Chen got a double eagle on the second hole, the first in the history of the Open, we said, what a nice sideline to this championship that will be. But when he led at the end of the first day, we said, well, that's interesting, and what a great thing for him. He'll remember all his life that he once led the open for a round. Well, when he led again at the end of the second day, we said, that is courage. He's a very courageous young man. Now with an actual gallery following him around the golf course, he still leads the open. But when he led last evening and shot his third straight round under 70, it became a very different story. T.C. Chen is for real. And there he is, real and live, still on the practice tee at this moment, at the age of 26 on the threshold of becoming the United States Open golf champion. Does he really realize what, how big a thing this is? Quite possibly he doesn't, you know? It, it's a definite possibility. Uh, the last major name in American sports that I can remember who was from the island of Taiwan, except for the kids who used to win the Little League World Series all the time, was C.K. Young. Remember, he was a decathlon star who battled it out with Rafer Johnson, the United States, in the 1960 Olympics. So that's the situation. Really the focus, the spotlight on one man here at Oakland Hills, a man from halfway around the world who's been on the United States tour for a couple of years. Right now, however, he is challenged and ch challenged quite Quite, uh, strenuously by a man just two shots behind. As we said, the man who won seven years ago went into a slump since then, Andy North of Madison, Wisconsin, but came out yesterday playing in the rain and the wind with no hat, no rain jacket, uh, virtually no protection at all. He came in with a fine round and his two shots out of the lead. There is Andy North with rounds of 70, 65 on Friday, and 70 again yesterday. We're almost ready for the final round. This ABC Sports exclusive is being brought to you by MasterCard, the official card of the PGA Tour, by AT&T, in long-distance services, information systems, telephones, and computers. AT&T is the right choice. By Mr. Goodwrench and General Motors Parts, who help you keep that great GM feeling with genuine GM parts. And by Team Xerox, the right products and right people all working together. So Chen and North are the leaders with 18 holes left to play. But how did they get there? And who were the others who came to the fore and faded along the way? Well, let's go back, back to Thursday in the first round of this year's Open. There was Fred Couples from the great Northwest, a man of average height and build, but one of the long hitters on the PGA Tour, and he was in form on Thursday. Shooting a 66, which ordinarily would have been certainly good enough to win the U.S. Open. The couples would come back the following day to get five under par after seven holes, then to go nine over on the following 11 holes and play himself, to all intents and purposes, out of the championship. But the name who came out of nowhere on Thursday was Se Chung Chen. So we said he had a double eagle in the second hole, and that piqued everybody's interest. They thought, what's going to happen to him after that? So often we'll see a man have a hole in one and then come apart. It wasn't the case with T.C. Chen. He shot a 65 on that day with shots like these. The young man, age 26, who took up the game at the age of 17, just nine years ago. The next day he came out, and it was Chen all over again. Not fading, not shaking, not looking like he knew where he was. Shooting at 69, his second consecutive round under par. He's not a short hitter, although he weighs only 145 pounds. He's one of the longer hitters that we've seen here this week getting home on par fives on occasion with two shots. But on Friday, a new challenger popped up. It was Jay Haas from the PGA Tour. 
native of Illinois, a neighboring state to Michigan here. Nephew of Bob Golby, who actually tied for second place the last time the championship was held here at Oakland Hills in 1961. Jay Haas, great on Friday, not so hot yesterday. In the rain and the wind, he faded back, dropped out of the picture to all intents and purposes for this title. It wouldn't be the U.S. Open, it wouldn't appear for Jay Haas. But now on Friday, Andy North also came to the fore. Andy North, out of Wisconsin, has had a long series of injuries. It hasn't simply been that he has played poorly in the last seven years. He's had a lot of problems. Seems to be back from them now for sure with a 65 on Friday that equaled the course record. This one almost made it 64. Saturday came. Se Chung Chen now had trouble with his driver on the early holes. On the hole where he had the double eagle on Thursday, he was in trouble after two shots on the par five second hole. Hit this third one. Looked like an almost impossible shot. You saw his club hit the tree branch after he hit the ball, but look at the effect. Made the birdie four instead of what looked like probably a bogey six. But on the next hole, he was in trouble again on the par three. Way over and to the left. It looked like he would either have to leave it in the long grass or else skull it clear across the green. One of the two. But no, he hit it just hard enough into the long grass to trickle onto the green and get into the position for a par three. This was the way he played all afternoon long. He had his problems. He had every chance in the world to fall back, to shake, but he didn't. He made putts like this. Look at the break on that. And look how unerring it. And truly, it goes into the hole. Yet another birdie for T.C. Chen. Three rounds, under 70, 65, 69, and 69. Only one man has ever played all four rounds of the Open under 70. That was Lee Trevito at Oak Hill when he won his first U.S. Open championship. Andy North. Still yesterday, remember, on the 16th hole. Very difficult, par four. He put it way on the left. Left himself a long, long putt. You can see just how long it is. It must have been 75 feet, somewhere in that area. With his unusual putting stance where he grabs the club way down the shaft. And he gave it a roll. He said, gee, he's going to get that close. <laughs> Did he ever? Into the hole. Andy North with rounds of 70, 65, and 70. With one stroke behind the leader at that point. Ended the day two strokes behind. Earlier today, now, this was the current United States Amateur Champion, Scott Verplank, at nine over for the championship, finishing up his round to become low amateur for 1970, 1985. He'll receive a gold medal for that performance. Interestingly, last year, a young man got a gold medal for tying as low amateur. His name was Rick Fair, and this year, he's in a position to challenge for the championship itself. So keep an eye on Scott Verplank. Keep an eye on young David Marr here, former PGA champion, native expert on the sport, resident expert, I should say, but he's a native also. About the white flowers, it's Father's Day, and somebody was kind enough to give these to us. Sometimes in the past day, we have seen people challenge for the United States Open title, lead at the end of third rounds, coming out of nowhere, G on that fourth round when the United States Open pressure sets in, we've seen their character kind of fade a little bit from the scene. Do you foresee that at all today with Chen? I really don't, Jim. He proved to me yesterday, uh, I, I didn't know that much about him and hadn't seen him play that much. He played in one of the worst days of weather I've ever seen in a U.S. Open, and he shot 69 after leading the tournament for two straight rounds. Uh, he really showed me yesterday he's very capable of winning, and as you pointed out earlier, I don't know that he really knows what he's doing. <laughs> he said earlier in the week, he said, you know, none of a Far, not a Far Eastern player has ever won this tournament. Like, he was amazed that no one from his part of the world had won it. Plus... Uh, the players that missed the cut, Nicholas, Watson, a lot of guys that you look for every year to be in longer the present uh, Masters champion. The names that might be challenging a player like Chen who doesn't have the experience aren't here. Mm -hmm. You've only got Andy North who's just coming out of a slump. Not a name that would scare someone in a way. Maybe in years past would have, but because of his slump. Uh, and the third reason, the big ball. I, the players all over the world, when they changed the rule in 1974 that you had to play the big ball in major championships as opposed to the small ball, uh, it's really improved the foreign players' uh, playing of golf. And, what about the effect of yesterday's rain and terrible weather on the golf course itself? Has it changed it? 
No, not at all, Jim. This course is in uh, marvelous condition. Uh, the wind is back the way it has been all week, and I look for uh, if a player's going to make a move like Ballesteros or Kite or someone, they've got to get off to a good start, and you can do that at the second hole, which is downwind today and easily reachable in two if you put the ball in the fairway. Well, now they're on the first hole, about to tee off Tom Kite of Texas at even par, seven shots out of the lead, a long way to go. But it's been done before. In 1960, a man named Arnold Palmer, a young golfer, trailed by seven with 18 to go, and he won the title. The main difference to me is Arnold's, Arnold was the kind of player that made a lot of birdies. Tom, on the other hand, is a very steady player. It would require that Chin would come back to the field, and he has really shown no signs of doing that. On the other hand, Tom's playing companion of the day, Seve Ballesteros, makes lots of birdies. That's right, and he certainly, you could, uh, if you had to liken Seve to some player, it would be Arnold. Look at this, going with an iron off the hmm. first tee. Well, that shows you uh, the wind, downwind. It's a great golf course, and it's so many of the holes that you drive on are bunkered each side. They're always in play, and you just, as usual open deal, you've got to keep it in the fairway. It well, surprised he, you a little, though, didn't it, when he went to an iron? Well, it really did. <laughs> Well, there he is on the left side of the fairway, considerably short of Tom Kite, obviously, because he used a very different golf club. That's not too far short of Tom. Okay, so they're out on the golf course. What kind of a golf course is it? Well, it's a difficult golf course, but it has its special characteristics, some of which we'll look at right now. It's a lovely course to look at. It is not quite the monster that it was in 1951 when Ben Hogan tamed it, or in his words, brought it to its knees, but it's a a great golf course, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. The fairways here remind me actually of a seaside course. It's hard to get a stance. It's level. There's a lot of roll uh, on the fairways, a lot of contour, and of course the length. Look at that. Four yards under 7,000, and they call it a par 70. There are the statistics on some of the par fours which tell their own story. Now, the driving area very narrow and always protected by something. If it isn't bunkers, it's water or something. And that's a good hole. It's not very long, but a hole where the, the players a lot of times will use a three wood or a two iron, so it'll play longer than 405 because you're laying up off the tee. And this is a giant hole here. Be back into the wind today. You have to drive between those bunkers, and then you have a long shot uphill into this rather small green, actually. 15, a unique par four with the bunker in the middle of the fairway. Players again will lay up here because you've got to take that bunker out of play in order to get a good shot to the green at, on your second shot. 16, great golf hole, chosen in most all-American golf holes, uh, picked by experts. Great second shot across the water there and slopes of greens. Have a look at this, Jim. You're glad we showed this again today, aren't you? <laughs> Dave Marr demonstrating some of the undulations and rolls you can get here and, of course, making sure he gets there in time for his ball not to hit the flank stick. <laughs> Could have been a penalty. Now, the rough. U.S. Open rough, and uh, that means one thing to a player. You might get a lie like that, that you'll be able to advance somewhat, maybe not put it on the green, and then you might grab one of these, and you're just trying to get it out into the fairway. Lanny Watkins on the first green. Oh, not a good start for Lanny. Started at one over, made a double bogey there. He's now three over for the championship, and... Just about played himself right out on the first hole. Well, that's what I mean. If, if it's if anyone's going to put any pressure on this young man, it, it has to be somebody like a Lanny that makes a lot of birdies. But when you make double bogeys, uh, that's no way to start a tournament, obviously, <laughs> no. or a last round of a U.S. Open. Or a $2 NASA, for that matter. <laughs> well, you can always press there. Now, maybe the field would like to press chin. I'm not too sure. <laughs> Here's Seve now on the fairway. Burst out of Spain as a teenager into the British Open. Won at a very young age. He's won it again since. He's won the Masters twice, but he has never won the U.S. Open. It makes no secret of the fact that he knows he has to win this one at least once to join the greats of the game. You see lots of trees here at Oakland Hills, and they've grown a lot since 1951. As Mr. Chen found out uh, yesterday on the second hole, 1951, of course, he wasn't even alive. <laughs> he wasn't too far along in 61 when Littler won. He knew what he was doing with the iron off the tee here. And the Beautiful. proper side of the fairway, well, it just shows you the wind change. Iron off the tee, and it's probably a short iron for Seve, a short iron. 
We'll see what Tom does. Up to this point, Seve has done exactly what he has to do, get off to a fast start. Hmm. Saw something that uh, bothered him a bit. Well, maybe he just wasn't quite ready. It can be a little nervous starting out, Jim, and you want to really get set, and if you don't have your mind on it, step away from it. Get set what you want to do. Remember, he's downwind. Okay. That was close to Seve, but safely on, Tom Kite. One of the most consistent players in the game. As you pointed out, he's a par shooter to a great extent. And one of the hardest workers, too. Now, let's have a look at Payne Stewart. Can't see the bottoms of his plus fours because he's in the bunker. Young man who's an American, who first played the Asian tour. And, oh, my goodness gracious. <laughs> that almost brought something else out of me. I wasn't expecting that at all. I don't think Payne was either. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, that's a neat little way to start there. Get you in the red right away. Well, you know, the worst thing about that is that was on tape, and the guys in the truck didn't tell us what was going to happen. <laughs> so, Payne Stewart goes to one under with that marvelous shot. That was an eagle, by the way, remember. And now Fuzzy Zeller putting for an eagle. He's made the second green in two. All right. So this should be a foretaste of what we might expect from Ballesteros when he gets to the second. If he should birdie the first and then have an eagle hole looking at him, things could change quickly. That's what you have to do here, Jim. Uh, uh, when you get the prevailing wind, you're downwind at one and two. Um, feel like I've beat this dog to death saying it, but you have to get off to a start here because like any great golf course, the finishing holes are so tough. That's the way the Bill Golf Courses get you off to a nice start and build up to a finale. Like Pebble Beach, as you mentioned yesterday. Defending champion. Or Birdie, as they say in Scotland. Moving him to two over for the championship. He's given a very good account of himself no matter where he finishes this year. Bad hip and all. The back is cured, now the hip is bothering him. <laughs> and on he moves to the third hole. Big galleries today. You know, early this morning, it didn't look like they were quite as big because it was still threatening rain, a little mist in the air, but now as it gets a bit brighter, they're all coming out from home. To see Mr. Chen make his great effort. Well, it's a great sports town, Detroit. They uh, oh. they turn out. Tigers have won, what, six in a row now, I think. And they love them. Other scores as we look at them. Good Dr. Morgan there. Mark O'Meara, Greg Norman. Now, the first green of Tom Kite. College. He played in the shadow of Ben Crenshaw. Since coming out on the tour, it's taken a lot of years, but he's become as just about as well known as Ben himself. He deserves it too, Jim, because he's a real hard-working guy. He's one of the last ones to leave the practice team. I think we may see some interesting things today. Well, as I said, Tom doesn't make a lot of birdies. <laughs> as you <laughs> said earlier, one for one. your unerring expertise. Yes. Long years on the tour, PGA <laughs> champion. Tom Kite, one under, six behind the leader who hasn't started yet. Another look. <laughs> Just about perfect. Now, Seve with a much closer opportunity.
really has a flat putter, you notice, and his grip's a little different there, but his putter is very flat compared to a lot of people. So what have been the odds there that Kite would make and Seve would miss? Well, that's golf. Yesterday when they finished, Seve was in the bunker at 18, and uh, Tom was in the bunker. Seve made five, Tom made three. Made yep. his bunker shot. Yep. Back to the first tee, because they're not all on the golf course yet. Here we have Rick Fair. A year ago, he tied for low amateur with Jay Siegel. Now he's back as a fledgling professional who hasn't qualified for the tour yet. Tried but missed. Looked right. a little left. Tied for fourth place at the moment with Payne Stewart and Tom Kite. And that's not the start that he wanted. Lots of bunkers, as we said, on the fairways in the driving area on this golf course. Yeah. Good news is it looked as though it's a little bit on the upslope, so it helps it uh, in your swing, get it up quicker over the lip there. Another surprise, Dave Barr out of Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. Two under, he's in third place. Only two men ahead of him. He's hit a lot of fairways, a lot of greens this week. Good, good tournament for David. He's gone left into the rough, but okay. sitting up with quite a good live. Pretty fortunate shot, really, for Dave Barr. One more group remains the tee off. Back again at Oakland Hills for the United States Open Golf Championship of 1985. Our other colleagues, well, of course, as always, there's Jack Whitaker and Peter Ellis. Let's meet them, Jack. Okay. Thank you very much, Jim. Peter, you know, this U.S. Open is quite different from many that I've been to in that the third round, there's usually a lot of movement. People are getting in position to try and catch the leaders on Sunday. Yesterday, there was no movement at all. Andy North just about held position. And it reminds me quite a bit of this year's Kentucky Derby here when Spend a Buck got out in front and when it came time to go chase him, he was too far gone. Well, we may see that today, of course. Uh, there were a couple of good rounds yesterday. Ballesteros missed a short putt on the last with 68. Lanny Watkins had a 69. But of course, we mustn't forget that Mr. Chen did another 69 with a missed little putt at the 17th hole. And people have very short memories because they keep saying, oh, we can't do it again. He's done it three times in a row. And I'm reminded of a young man back in 1968 at Oak Hills. You remember uh, yes, Lee indeed. Torino with his black pants at half mast and the red socks and he kept doing under 70 and he can't do it, he can't do it. And we saw the birth of one of the greatest players the, in the history mm -hmm. of the game. Now, whether Mr. Chen is going to be one of the greatest players, I know not. But it's like Rocky all over again, you know. It's the American dream of the kid from the wrong side of the fairways. Maybe he will become the U.S. champion. I don't know, but it, it promises to be a fascinating day. It certainly does, Peter. And now let's meet our roving reporters. I will be following T.C. Chan and Andy North as the 1985 United States Open comes to a conclusion. T.C. Chan has proved himself this week as a, not only a great player, but a real patient one. When he has been in trouble, he's extricated himself very well. I really look forward to seeing him play the last round. Andy North, I think, is back. He played very well yesterday, and when he did get in trouble, he got everything out of his round that he possibly could have. And I think that's a great tribute to someone playing in the kind of weather we had yesterday. Judy Rankin, what do you think about your group? Well, I'm going to be with Rick Fair and Dave Barr today. Rick is playing in his first U.S. Open as a professional. Uh, unfortunately, he still cannot play on the PGA Tour. He's not a card holder. I think this tournament may very well give him the confidence he needs, though, to go ahead and become a card holder and play very well on the PGA Tour. I was lucky enough to follow Dave Barr yesterday. He played extremely well, just very quietly went about his business and could be a surprise today, I think. Ed, how about your group? Well, Judy, I look for strange things to happen in the U.S. Open. Uh, I, I'm not foolish enough to say that if I were a betting man, I wouldn't bet on the leader if I had to bet on a single player. But I think there's a very good chance someone's going to come out of the pack and get started early and put a lot of pressure on these guys. And I would look for Seve Ballesteros or Tom Kite to be one of those. I'm going to be with that group. Seve's got all the shots. Tom has all the shots. And I think one of those two guys might make a run at, at Chen and Andy North. Now let's go back to Jim McKay and some more golf. All right, Bob, thank you very much. As you speak, for the first time in two days, the sun is shining on the 18th hole. Still a lot of clouds around. 
but it seems to be clearing. A good time to go to our colleague Jack Whitaker. Jack? Thank you, Jim. As we look up at this very F. Scott Fitzgerald type clubhouse, marvelous clubhouse, just reeking of the 1920s when indeed it was built. And there's our leaderboard as Mr. Chen and Mr. North are about ready to tee off. But already some heroics, two birdies and an eagle, Fuzzy Zeller and Tom Kite having birdies and Payne Stewart having that marvelous eagle from the bunker at the second hole. <clears throat> Mr. Chen waiting for the official starter to introduce them. Final round of the 85th United States Open Golf Championship. We understand that um, I don't know how much sleep Mr. Chen got. He didn't get much the Thursday night. But we do understand he found a marvelous Chinese restaurant. The for this group is Jim Han, the president of the United States Golf Association from Austin, New York. The observer is M.T. Johnson, a member of the USDA left. Executive Committee from Amarillo, Texas. The players are the United States Open champion of 1978, Andy North, Madison, Wisconsin. have been observed and the last group is about to tee off. Not a very auspicious start. Only these are the champions who led in the first three rounds and went on to win. Walter Hagen and Jim Barnes way back when. So that's another legend facing this young man. Jack, they're going to have to come get him because I don't, he doesn't look like he's a man backing up. No, sir, and he really believes himself that he was destined to win this championship. Andy North now, whose marvelous putter yesterday kept him from real serious trouble. When he won in 1978, he also had a magic putter. Here he was at Cherry Hill in Denver, Colorado, 1978. This was on the Friday round, the second round of the tournament. Look at the size of this one. Oh. <laughs> Put him two under. Then at the 18th, on Saturday, yesterday, watch this. I mean, 1978, of course, on the Saturday round. That one went in. And this was the last day, and this one, and look at the size. He needed this to win. The wind blowing, and he walked away from it. This was for a bogey five, yep. if you remember, Jack, and he had dumped one in the bunker and then played this shot out, and if you could ever feel a man maybe going to PC, Dave Stockton there, uh, who finished the stroke back. Little important putt for David and for Andy. And then to walk off it, get himself together again, and then finally stroke it. Firmly back of the cup, 
and the championship was his. And here he is back after some back problems and elbow problems. And his putter yesterday and Friday here at Oakland Hills was something to behold. But he has put it in the bunker there to, to the left on this first hole. And let's uh, ask Mr. Rosberg uh, what the situation looks like. For being in the bunker, Jack, he's got as good a lie as you could ask for. It's kind of a wet, sandy lie, uh, and it's not any place that has been raked. There's been a few other players in that bunker, and if you get unlucky enough to get where it's been raked, uh, it really would be a bad break. But he is in a spot that nobody's been, and he really has a good lie. Now we move ahead to Ballesteros at the second hole. He got there in two. Now we're told this is his fourth shot. And so we'll have that left for par. Now Payne Stewart. First hole on Andy North. Oh. And he's gone over. That ball jumped the gallery and everything. Hmm. He could be back in some heavy rough in a very unpleasant position. Bob, that looked like a good swing and a good shot. Is it did he just misjudge the, the wind or something that much? It kind of looked like it, Dave. I thought that he liked it when it was in the air, and uh, it didn't look like a bad shot at all. It, it didn't look like it was going to be that long, but it hit hard. It hit it really solidly. with an eight iron to the first green. Sitting right up there, another birdie attempt for the leader. He has seemed to be not affected whatsoever by the pressure of playing in the U.S. Open and leading it, and here's how he feels about it. I really got some pressure, but today before I start, you know, I have uh, I just thinking, I don't want to think he must win this tournament. So, you know, if I think he must win this tournament, I maybe got more pressure. So I just try to play my game and, and whatever. You know, I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't mind what score I shoot. I just do my best. And that's it. And so far, his best has been good enough. Moving to the first green of the final round with a nice birdie possibility. Well, that's what you have to try to do, Jack, what he said. It's pretty hard to keep <laughs> yourself thinking that simply, though. Well, they tell me, Dick Taylor told me that he first became aware of him at the World Amateur in 1980, where in Pinehurst, for 63 holes, he was tied with Hal Sutton as a low player and eventually finished third. So he had, and he had only been playing golf five years in. Tom Kite. Far three third hole. Asteris eventually parred the second hole. 
as we go back now to Andy North and his problem. What is it, uh, Bob Rosberg? Well, the ball actually no. did get caught up in the second or third row of the gallery, and it kept it on the upslope, which is a tremendous break. If it had gone any further, it would have gone down in some very bare ground, and he had almost an impossible shot. It's not the best of lies. People have been standing there, but uh, this will put a test to somebody's nerves, playing a shot on the first hole off a sort of bare lie and a very little shot. It's only a shot of about 25 feet. So the only thing going for him then, Ross, he, he's also pitching against the wind, which is a little bit of help, isn't it? That's right. He's pitching right up against the wind. recovery shot by Andy North. He did that quite a few times yesterday. Well, a couple of big putts coming up, though. Mm -hmm. Chin makes, Andy misses. All of a sudden, you've really uh, got a little air between them. Hmm? What'd you say about those horses? Yeah. <laughs> Not coming back. Now, the gallery across the fairways, you can see. It looks like Sunday at the U.S. Open. Now Ballesteros at the third tee. but off the green. Now, Chen for the birdie at first hole. That ought to boy Andy's spirits a little bit. Well, it helps his cause somewhat, mm -hmm. but he still has a little work to be completed. Far for the leader at number one. Now the challenger for par. got one mm -hmm. here, Jack, and it, you know, that's a big putt to, to make or to miss there because a lot of times that'll really set the mood for your round and your, the, the confidence you have in that uh, putt's going to break this much or the speed of the greens. All right, well, a bogey for Andy North, and so the distance becomes three strokes now with Mr. Chen, still the leader, and we'll be back. Welcome back, and we look at Dave Barr, the Canadian putting for a birdie. Birdie at the second. He dropped a stroke at the first, took five there. Rick Fair took a two over par six. So they dropped a little further behind, but uh, this for a birdie. Oh. And yes. Five and a four. And back to two under. That's just how he started the day. Now Rick Fair. 
now the gap at the top of the leaderboard there, three strokes, and it's almost developing into a classic match play situation between Chen and North, and unless Bar, Kite, Payne Stewart, and Ballesteros get cracking, it's going to be a very much a match play situation between those two. But a few players here making move. Had three scores under 70 so far today. Hal Sutton and David Graham, 68s. And the young amateur, Scott Verplank, who wins the amateur medal, a 69. The other amateur, Jay Siegel, taking 80. Some more scores for you. Uh, the figure on the right shows you how many holes they've completed in this, the final round of the 85th US Open Championship. 13 now, and this is a cracking short hole, classic. Just under 200 yards, and it was here that uh, the PGA Championship in 1979 was settled. A uh, tremendous playoff between David Graham and Ben Crenshaw. Very good hole indeed. Well bunkered, as you can see, quite a few considerable steps in the green, and to get the ball close to the hole is not an easy task at all. I think if you were to ask any of the, the field of players here if they'd settle for a three at this hole, they would just walk straight to the fourth tee. Now that looks an innocent pin placement, but there is quite a, a severe slope, a step, just the other side of the flag as we look back, and the room at the top on the flat plateau isn't very large. So it's a very tricky one to get it close. Coming back a little bit into the wind, wind left to right, a bit against. And just crept on. And more trouble for Andy North. Again, looks a good lie, Bob. Yes, he caught a good lie again, and slightly on the upslope, Peter. He should be able to get it down about 100 yards short of the green. That's a good shot down the right center of the fairway. A little closer than 100 yards, maybe 70 yards from the hole. So Andy North on this long par five. Well short in two, this hole today with wind behind, reachable in two strokes. There you see our little model of this hole and all those huge bunkers lying in wait. I think Chen's only got an iron shot left, uh, Peter. He hit another big drive. He really killed the first two drives he's hit. Yes, I, I fancied he'd get a three at the first hole and didn't, but then I thought Sebi might have got a three there as well. Now, if he can birdie this hole, he really will be have made just the sort of start he and his supporters would uh, would have wanted. Very important for him to get off to a good start. Get four or five uh, pars or maybe sneak a birdie in the first few holes, then hold ground over that difficult patch in the middle of the 18, and then put in a good stout finish. Well, if he reaches this with an iron, well, that'll be some hitting. 527 yards. They say that's a three iron. Well, if he can reach for the three iron, well, I don't know. He can indeed. Look at this. We really are seeing something a bit special at the moment. Whether it's going to last uh, throughout the afternoon, I don't know. But he's got that putt for an eagle. He's three strokes ahead. Andy North is well short. The others are chasing, but a long way behind. This is Mr. Goodrich. Did you know that your GM car's engine uses more air than gasoline? For every sip of gas, it takes 15 gulps of air. That's why a clean air filter helps keep you from wasting power or damaging your engine. So let Mr. Goodrench check your oil, fuel, and air filters. Chances are you'll save gas and money, too. It's another of Mr. Goodrench's good ways. as long as 
is a fine quality diamond. The Cubs battle the Mets for San Diego and Los Angeles on ABC's Monday Night Baseball. When you turn to the Robert Half Organization, you're tapping the resources of the world's largest, most experienced accounting, financial, and data processing recruiting specialists. The placement professionals at Robert Half have a working knowledge of your specialty because they have held responsible positions in the accounting, banking, and data processing fields. So if you're looking for a qualified professional at any level to fill an accounting, financial, or data processing position, or if you are considering a job change, call Robert Half. Amy, it's me. The car broke down, but don't panic. I'm at Amco. I'll be there for our transmission. Wedding. You know I love you. But these guys are experts. This is the Amco manager. We'll fix it right. Don't worry. At Amco, we care as much about people as we do transmissions. It's what we call double A service, and it's why we fix more transmissions than anyone else. Amy, he's on his way. Congratulations. You get double A service at double A MCO. The Dad's Day Run tonight at 11.30. Andy North's third shot on the par five second hole at Oakland Hills. Downwind still. He, well, he went way over on the first hole. Could that have him just being a little too cautious on this second one? I don't think so. It looked yeah. like he tried to, to, say, play a little punch shot in there. And going downwind, you would expect it to take a, at least one long hop. And it, somebody in the gallery yelled, bite. It bit all right. Drug up about 50 feet short. Tomorrow night, the Cubs against the Mets, or San Diego against Los Angeles on ABC's Monday Night Baseball. Cubs and Mets really at it this year, along with Montreal in their division. And Saturday, junior middleweight fight. Donald Curry, one of the real names in boxing these days, going against Pablo Baez. Also, the United States Outdoor Track and Field Championship, all beginning at 4.30 Eastern and Pacific, 3.30 Central. Well, look, this is Chen's second shot with, we were told, the three iron. Hands may be a little lower than you would try to teach someone, but the thing that I like the best about this young man so far is his rhythm. Takes the club away very nicely. A lot of leg action. His right knee sort of gives way, but he gets it back into position. Now, look at that club bend as he starts down. And this is strength right here. Weight on the left side. Right heel is up, but still down. It's not outside the line, and that is a beautiful swing there. What can you say to the average golfer, Dave, about the fact that this man weighs 145 pounds and is as long as he is? There must be a moral. Find your own rhythm and try to get good balance. In other words, you want to swing as hard as you can, but still be on balance. Now, I forget who it was yesterday saying you don't have to be a person with a lot of brute strength. It's how much speed can you generate through the ball, like a Chichi Rodriguez. <laughs> He's sure. been a good player a long time. Well, Andy North, off to a slow start, and very conscious of the fact that the man with whom he is head to head is still playing magnificently. break. Not quite enough. We'll need that for a par five. We've mentioned that Andy has had a long drought during the last seven years. We talked to him about it. What's happened? I haven't played very well. I've struggled a little bit. I've had some some problems, um, but hopefully there are some of those are taken care of. And I'm, I probably feel better physically than I have this year than I have in probably seven or eight years. And it's it's much more fun to come to the golf course. My attitude's a lot better. And because of that, I'm playing a little bit better. When you say problems, are they physical, mental? Well, I've, I've had quite a few physical things that I don't want to go into, but, you know, we all have things we have to deal with out here. And, uh, you know, I just, I didn't play very well because of it. And I don't think it affected my play as much as it might have my attitude about the whole, the whole world of which I was trying to play. So uh, it's, it's gotten a lot better. I'm, I'm enjoying playing golf this year, probably for the first time in about four years. So, you know, if you enjoy what you're doing, you're going to play a lot better. And now Chen for the attempt at an eagle three. It could put him at nine under. He's never far off. That for a birdie then. 
that have put him at eight under for the championship. And it looks as though the man who is getting off to the lead is Mr. Chin. Yes. <laughs> he, he's putting a move on himself. I remember when Billy Johnson, the United States, was doing so well in practice for the downhill race in the Winter Olympics. People say, yeah, well, you know, wait, wait, wait. They kept waiting until he got the gold medal. And this man here might be getting one of his deals would be a gold medal. One under for the day with a four-stroke lead now over Andy North. Six strokes over Dave Barr. Seven over Tom Kite and Payne Stewart. And Andy has to make this. I just think of what Chen's done. He's hit just four fine golf shots. Driver and iron to the first and driver and long iron to the second. I mean, just the way you dream about playing them. And Andy's been struggling. All right. So he's made the par on the second hole. But still, the difference is four strokes between them now. We're going to get a special report from ABC News now on the hostage situation. Here's Peter Jennings. Tim, thank you. There are a number of developments to report in Beirut now. It is 10 o'clock in the evening there, and TW 847 has been on the ground for exactly 7 hours and 12 minutes. Just a short while ago, another passenger came off. He was ill, and he has been taken to the American University Hospital in Beirut. We've talked just a short while ago with his wife in Paris. Hope to talk to her again in a few minutes. But he has some trouble with his ribs. He fell on a cruise they were taking before he got in this flight. So he's not critically ill, but he is in the American University Hospital. Uh, the president's spokesman, Larry Speaks, has just held uh, the first major briefing with the White House press corps since the president returned from Camp David in Maryland. Sam Donaldson is standing by on the White House lawn. Sam, uh, what's the administration telling us? Well, Peter, Speaks reported that the president met for an hour and 15 minutes with his chief foreign policy advisors. They reviewed the situation. They discussed the options they believe the hijackers may have open to them, and obviously they discussed the options that the United States may have open to it. None of that, of course, was reported in detail by Speaks. And Speaks, however, did restate the U.S. policy, which is not to give in to hijacker demands and to discourage other governments from doing so. Sam, can I interrupt? Does that yeah. mean they're going to discourage Israel from giving up the prisoners? No, I don't think so, uh, Peter. I think what we're doing is simply staying on the record as having a consistent policy, which is not to give in to demands. And, of course, if you don't give in to demands, you can't possibly encourage other governments to give in to demands. On the other hand, I think if Israel should decide, because we say it's up to Israel, to go ahead and release these prisoners, and that should lead to a peaceful solution, we're not going to be terribly angry. We're not going to retaliate against Jerusalem. Yeah, of course, Sam, there are no direct demands to the United States, really. The demands are to Israel. Well, that's quite correct. The United States is in contact with friendly governments, including Israel, and some factions that are clearly perhaps not too friendly. It is understood here, for instance, Peter, that we're in contact with Nabi Berry and other factions in uh, Lebanon, in uh, Beirut, uh, through what channels, I'm not certain, because they're not saying here. Sam, why the change of uh, public posture? The administration has been quiet, as you pointed out, tried to stay out of the way, and now very public. Everybody coming through the southwest gate, the president arriving home? Well, they simply say the president wanted to meet with his advisors face to face, that he'd been talking to them all weekend on the telephone, but he just thought it was time for a meeting. My guess is that their conclusion as to what's happened so far is that this hijacking, a uh, terribly serious event from the very beginning, has just mounted and mounted. It's not going to go away, and the president had to be seen to be personally involved. It's one thing correctly to say that telephone lines reach to Camp David. It's another when you're the leader of a country that's undergoing a hijacking like this to be seen to be personally involved. And I suspect that's one reason why Mr. Reagan came down here about an hour and a half early. Sam, thank you very much. On the telephone with us from Paris now is Mrs. Robert Peel. She is the wife of the man who has just been taken to the American University Hospital. And her son, Robert, is still on the aircraft. They come from Hutchison, Kansas. Mrs. Peel, can you hear me? Yes, I can. You were a hostage yourself at one point. What were the conditions like for you? Well, the, uh, they took 19 women off after three hours, and I was one of them. I was one of the last ones to go off. They only took the older women off, and because my hair was bleached so, so light, I think they felt that I was one of them. So I was lucky because I was the youngest that they took off. Now your husband hurt his ribs, I gather, did he? And that's why he's perhaps been taken to the hospital? Yes. Uh, the crew left a hole open on the ship, and he fell in the hole. 
They were draining some water out, and you know my husband only has one eye. Yes, so when he looked down, he didn't see the hole. Mrs. Peel, thank you very much. Uh, if you wouldn't mind standing by for a few minutes, I'd like to make a couple of other points. Let's go uh, quickly to Beirut. Charles Glass is there. Charles, I understand the aircraft has now moved into a position where it could be refueled, and it's also moved into a lighted area, perhaps to give the hijackers a better sense of security. That's right, Peter. They're waiting to be refueled, but as of the moment, they've not been refueled, but they're still sitting on the tarmac at Beirut Airport, and there's been no major development yet. Nabi Bari has been meeting with European diplomats here, and has been on the phone. His office has confirmed to us that uh, Barry himself has been on the phone with U.S. Ambassador Reginald Bartholomew, who is at the U.S. Embassy residence in the hills in East Christian, East Beirut. Good, Charlie. Thank you very much. Um, a couple of things just quickly before we go. One of the hijackers has told Nabi Barry through a radio and through another Shiite Amal official, quote, we pledge to Mr. Barry not to harm the passengers. That was a pledge he demanded from the hijackers uh, some hours ago. He appears to have it. The general feeling in Beirut tonight is that at 10 o'clock at night, it's not going to be resolved in a hurry. But as a number of people have pointed out, as long as they're talking, that's better rather than worse. I'm Peter Jennings in New York. We'll keep you up to date on TWA Flight 847. We'll have a special at 7 o'clock Eastern Time. To put it all in perspective, 6 o'clock Central. I hope you'll join us. Jim McKay, back to you. Well, the leaders have moved to the third hole here at the U.S. Open. Chun Chen of Taiwan and Andy North of Wisconsin. Chen with a four-stroke lead. And on this third hole, he has not let up a bit. There you see the other leaders, Bar of Canada. Now, on tape, this is the tee shot of Chun Chen while we were away for the special report. Third hole, par three. I believe we heard him say in English, get up. <laughs> so he even talks to himself in English now, now that he's on the tour. That's a fine golf shot there, Jim. It's now we're live. Uh, sorry, Dave. Well, this is Andy North's long birdie attempt. of still cameras in the background as Andy leaves it very short. They ran it by the first hole, second hole. See, get off speed a little, missing that first putt. Can kind of make you a little shaky for the rest of the round. And Jen has another realistic attempt at a birdie. You know, we were there in 1980 at the World uh, Team Amateur Championship. ABC Sports was there when Mr. Chen finished second to Hal Sutton. He was way behind him, as I recall, but he said, yeah, it's a great accomplishment for that guy, sure. Okay. Little did we know, Dave Barr on the fourth fairway. In third place, two under. Whoops. Let's see where that went. It's on the front there. Oh, yeah, just on the front. Now back to the leader. Just a little short. So speed from that direction must be a bit deceptive. Just the tap in for the three, however, to keep him at eight under, one under for the day. I'm sure he'd have putted that under other conditions, he'd probably be standing in Andy's line, so he's going to wait. but very simple. So mm -hmm. Arms hanging straight down. Right. Really needed that one for the par three to remain at four under for the championship. One over for the day. Now the tap in for Chen. All right. 
The lead remains at four with three holes down. Fifteen to go. We'll be with them all the way. No noise from Seve Ballesteros yet. You notice he's still holding fast at even par. He's eight strokes behind. Now, fourth hole. There it is. This hole played very tough yesterday because it was against the wind. Now, today, with the wind, it'll play a little more like it did the first two rounds. With David here, putting for a birdie. Mm -hmm. Well, he bogeyed the first, birdied the second. And had a good effort there. Won the Quad Cities Open in 1981. It's his only win on tour so far. Now back to the fourth tee. You saw the model of the hole. Coolish still. Some wind. Overcast. We saw the sun for about five minutes was on. Rossi, what's your general impression so far? Well, he... I've seen a five good of shots I've seen in a long time, especially from a leader. I mean, he just hit every one perfectly. He can't do much better than he's done. This ball is going to have to hook. Whoops, I believe it hit that person standing there, definitely. It hit the lady that has the, uh, has the marker. Supposed to bark it didn't the ball. hit her very hard, though. I don't think it disturbed the shot at all. It would not have gone in the bunker, but it's perfect right now. The lady's reason for being there is to mark the ball after it lands, but it caught her napping just a bit. Well, she was in the right place to yes. see where the ball was, <laughs> but he may have been thinking a little bit about yesterday. If you remember, he hooked the ball on this hole yesterday and got behind the trees. Still made par, though. Andy's going with an iron, Rossi. Well, he's hit two kind of erratic drives uh, to start with, David, and I, you don't want to drive in the bunker. But he didn't like this one. Wind. He didn't like this one. Well, that's to the left again. It's in the bunker, Bob. And in the bunker. Well, when you start laying up in trouble, Jim, you're really in trouble. <laughs> that's for sure. We're at the open. This ABC Sports exclusive is being brought to you by Toshiba. Toshiba's new Chroma Touch copier goes from black to red or blue or brown at a touch. Fresco, Changeo, that's Toshiba. Quality in, quality out. By Hayes, we make innovative computer products for enterprising people. And by exceptionally smooth Michelob, the beer of choice for people who are moving up. Where you're going, it's Michelob. Back at the United States Open, Andy North, who has been in three traps off the tee in the first four holes. Can he get home from here, Rossi? Jack, he doesn't have too good a lie this time. He's in a spot that's been raked. Now, he's got to get it up over the lip of the bunker, and he has about 180 yards to go. I don't think that he can get it to the hole. He may get it to the front edge. And he better be careful. He sure gets out. Sort of almost ricocheted off the lip of the bunker. Right in the that is a great game. shot, believe me. That ball caught the grass on the way up. Very, very close to hitting the lip. It's also pin high. <laughs> <laughs> the things they can do. Uh -huh. And now the leader. And uh, he has a clear shot, Rossi, doesn't he? Yes, he's uh, almost perfect. He's got a lie that's uh, any like any lie in the rough. The ball is going to be hard to control. If it's sitting up where he could hit it with a driver if he wanted to. I believe he's playing an eight iron. About 165 yards downwind, downhill. going a little left. I think it's going to have to get up. It's really it's running high. Across. It's very high. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it had to come out that way, and it uh, caught that little down slope there on the edge of the green. He probably can putt it or will putt it, don't you think, David? Well, he has a choice there. I, don't, I haven't seen him play enough to know what he might choose. Here's David Barr at two under.
playing the second shot at the fifth hole. Judy, how has that group been doing today? Well, they got off to a rather poor start. The first hole was hard on both of them, but I think they've got themselves together now. They've played well the last few holes. Dave playing with young Rick Fair. Now we're at the sixth tee, and this is, of course, Tom Kite. <laughs> Tom has just sustained two bogeys in a row and has moved now to one over after that opening birdie. But puts that one that far away from the green. Correction, that's about this tight. Yeah. Now a look at Rick Fair at the fifth hole. With a little burn going through there. And he's right by his playing partner. Well, Jack, you want to shoot at that pin that's just over that <laughs> bunker. I mean, you really want to, but as you start down, sometimes you bail out to the left away from the trouble. Mr. Chen with a four-shot lead over Andy North at the moment. And Ballesteros still hovering at even par. Lanny, who was three over after a double bogey at one, has come back a little bit. There's some of the other scores. I'm just trying to think where I've seen more great consistent golf as this Mr. Chen has been playing, David, and I guess Raymond Floyd at the Masters is the nearest thing I can come to. And he won it by nine shots or something that week. Well, this man, you know, he still may not win. Uh, but the shots that he's hit, as you say, you'd be hard-pressed to remember who has hit any better shots under a similar situation. He just keeps repeating the same swing, doesn't he? Marvelous. Well, takes a lot of work to do that. Uh, it's just in the edge yeah. there, so... And looks relatively clean, like he could get at the back of the ball if he, in fact, did want to put it. At the eighth tee, the familiar figure of Payne Stewart, Knickerbockered. One under par. Drove it perfectly, and we're back now to the fourth green and the leader, Mr. Chen. He did put it, Jack. Mm -hmm. And nicely. Perfect speed. That's left for par. enough, but he had it going right at it. Jack, I can't remember an open where so soon in the last round this, this man Chin really can control his own destiny now. Mm -hmm. Very much so. In the sixth fairway, Tom Kite, second shot uphill to the shortest par four on the course, but a green that can give you some difficulties. About 140 yards or so, Jack. Mm -hmm. What happened to Tom with those two bogeys, uh, Ed? 
Well, he drove but poorly at the fourth hole and couldn't get the ball on the green. And at number five, after a perfect tee shot, he just pushed his second shot to the right with probably about a five iron. I was very surprised to see Tom hit that kind of a shot. All right, we're back at four now for Andy North and his par putt. Another sigh. Don't forget, that's a pretty good par because he laid up with an iron in the bunker. Now, David Barr for a birdie. Just ahead of the leaders on the fifth green. Magnificent putt by Dave Barr. Yeah, but I think you might like to have that chopped up into six footers yes. and use them as needed. <laughs> Take another oh look, there. Gee, this yeah. thing breaks as far as a first down, I About think. About six feet. And I was going to say, really, it's not a realistic chance for Bertie. He's just trying to get close. Of course, that might have been off the green, too, if it had swallowed up. Mr. Chen made his far back at the fourth hole. There he is. We're also apprised that Payne Stewart had birdied the sixth hole, so he is now two under. Dave Barr three under. And here's the fifth hole. It's a little creek going across down there. Rossi, can he reach that creek with a drive? David, I don't believe so. Even uh, the wind is coming out of the right a little and is a little behind him, but I don't think he can get there. The, the fairways are not quite as firm as they were uh, when you had to worry about it in the PGA in 79. That's absolutely down the water line, that one. That's, uh, and long. <laughs> Dead solid perfect, hmm? Well, got a bad case of the lifts. T-shot has been harming Andy North here in his chase of Mr. Chen, who leads in this tournament by four shots. Welcome back to the final round of this year's U.S. Open Championship. And what a sparkling last round it promises to be. Here's Payne Stewart playing the eighth. It's very difficult. Par for all uphill. Second shot, two under par going well. Four hundred and thirty-nine yards. And a splendid shot from Payne Stewart. I've seen quite a bit of this young fellow play uh, not here and down in Australia. I'm very impressed with his striking. There's the central scoreboard and the excellent scorers who keep the uh, patrons up to date with all the scores going on. Now Andy North at the fifth. Bob, lie. is he okay? Well, he has a pretty good lie, Peter, in that the grass is going the, toward the hole. The, the grain of the, of the rough is going on toward the hole. He's going to have to shoot it at the flag uh, because of this little tree in front of him and then let the wind blow it back to the left into the middle of the green. I don't think he could stop it up over the bunker out of this rough. Well, as you could see from our camera at the back of the green there, the flag is very close to the bunker. We're got a good view as the player sees it he's got to get it over that bunker six iron he's hitting seemed to make pretty good contact 
Yeah, uh, right in the centre of the green, and you can see how receptive the greens are after that continuous rain of yesterday. That ball, although it came out of quite heavy rough, didn't move more than two or three feet. Dave Barr, the sixth hole, eight iron. And rather fortunate just to get the spin there off that little edge, that little fringe, but not as good as he would have hoped, obviously. Now, Say Chen, right from the ideal position here at the fifth. Oh, well, he's lost it way to the right, Peter. And squirted that over there in the trees. Trying to hit a four iron. Now Payne Stewart at the eighth. Very quick putt this one down the hill. Will it turn? Uh, not quite. Payne Stewart three under par for today. After seven holes. This little putt here to par the eighth. And Chen coming up behind, although he still leads by four. It's the first time we've seen any semblance of a, of a mistake from him. His second shot to the fifth, which he squirted away. Some other scores for you. Danny Watkins started with a six, but has uh, had a couple of birdies, but just dropped another one. what this young fellow's thinking about well he's got plenty to occupy his mind today and uh, perhaps Bob's been able to get over there and have a look at what faces him I haven't got there quite yet Peter but uh, he's going to have to play some kind of a low shot because there is an overhanging tree and it's going to be very difficult to stop even if he did get it up in the air he's coming straight down wind and and straight uh, down the hill so he's really got a tough shot well this is a time when we'll see uh, how much experience he's gleaned. He's four strokes ahead. Andy North isn't, uh, he's on the green, and of course, might well hold it long putt for a birdie. But he can afford to drop one. And I think the great thing here is in trying to get a par four, he mustn't take six or seven. That's all part of learning how to play the game. That's this ball that doesn't look to be lying ball that badly. If we just tilt up, we can see maybe what he's examining the grass there. It's interesting, look, he's looking to see the thickness of the grass, the condition of the ground there. Now he's picturing this shot coming out under the trees, landing about here. Now if I land the ball here, it should go to hole. That sort of thing quite tricky though he played a couple of miracle shots yesterday now uh, whether he can whether he can still do it I don't know but Penn Stewart up ahead got his par four at the eighth he stays two under but six behind Chen now uh, here's a good view of what he's got to do the ball is just about there he's got to squirt it in between those trees miss the umbrella you go to the right of the umbrella use that little slope maybe but if he gets this within 10 or 12 feet, it'll be a very good shot indeed. This is the first poor shot he's hit, and it really was quite a bad one. He had a four iron, and uh, that's a pretty wayward shot for a four iron. And it's the first miss cue he's hit all day. There you see it. What a good view you get. And you can see how close the flag is to the front of the green. Lofted club, hands forward. No, it didn't come off that time. He just moved forward on it. You could see his head come up. He just didn't hit it positively. And now uh, he's got to be very careful. He doesn't take three or more from here, and suddenly he's taken six. Ninth hole now, the most difficult of short holes. Payne Stewart. 217 yards. And nicely on. That was a two iron. Now Chen. Fourth shot. 
He's got a little bit of a green there to, to land on. He uh, doesn't look to be lying too badly. He looks to have a sand iron in his hand. Now he's just got to make sure he keeps the body still, the hands forward, just make a firm, decisive little shot, land it on the edge of the green. Oh, he hit it twice. Oh, well, well, well. Now, Frank Hannigan, I think that was a double, if not triple, hitter there. Well, if he hit it twice, it's, uh, it counts as two strokes. Let's see uh, on the uh, slow-mo repeat, Peter. I think he stubs the ground, and then the club catches the ball up, which uh, I think it'll show us very clearly. He's all right to hear. He catches the grass, the club stops, and then the club comes on there and just hoiks it round to the left. Now, Frank, uh, it looked pretty obvious that he hit that only twice, but would that be his decision? Would he own up to the to the referee there, or would the observer say, hey, I think you hit that so many times? Well, well there's a referee, the president of the USGA, Jim Hand, is with that group, and if there was a question of fact to be determined, uh, it would be it would be done by Jim, but I, I don't think that's even, uh, that's even an issue. He hit the ball twice. He knows what everybody knows. Yeah, he well, certainly didn't hit it three times. No. So here's Andy North, and what a turnaround. This is North for a birdie three. How and when the, the, we would find out whether he went what to get the screen. Pretty good, too, if it runs. No, short of pace. But he'll feel pretty confident that he's got his four virtually. He may mark this and wait. I don't know. Yes, he's... Now, Say Chen has had five shots. Uh, he's, he's got a tricky little shot that he's got this uh, down in two for a seven. What will he find out for the viewers at home whether he did it twice if he's going to declare it himself? tremendous effort well he fought to get his six but look it's gone four and a half feet past he has a rather wistful smile but he's got some putt for a seven and uh, well there was no question you could see there very clearly on our replay that in fact Chen was unfortunate enough to hit that ball twice out of the rough here it comes again you'll see the backswing you'll see him actually strike at the ball the club tangles up in the long grass but the, then releases and catches the ball up there so it was one of those unfortunate things that uh, sometimes can happen and it happened there and that was a sure sign of, of nerves coming in and a very sad thing to see and now it's interesting to see whether he can recover his composure uh, Frank, any further thoughts? Well, as far as the score is concerned, uh, if there's any question about it, Andy North, his fellow competitor, is actually keeping uh, Chen's score. And that's gone left. And this is going to be an eight. So, yes, unless Andy North is satisfied that the score is correct, he can say, no, I'm not going to sign it. So, But I don't think there's any real... Uh, question that he hit the ball twice so what a difference 15 minutes makes that's an eight and uh, well 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 now the players up ahead are going to suddenly see that and wonder what on earth has happened that tells the whole story Andy North and Chen for <laughs> it really is an extraordinary game isn't it now you might wait to see if there's an exchange after this hole, just a, just a little uh, a word or two between uh, North and Chen, but I think not. I think North knows exactly what he scored. Wow, what a chain around, what a turnaround. He'd hit a beautiful tee shot. So North has got, the, has got the, that's his scorecard, he's got Chen's scorecard, yeah. and he's actually marking it down now. Yeah, I don't think there's... I don't think there's any question that Andy saw everything that happened. There'd be about uh, seven or 8,000 people there that could tell him anyway. So on they go, and that's a tragedy at the fifth. 
for Mr. Chen. Eight strokes, so from four ahead, he's now level, and what a test of character we're going to see now, not only from Chen, who has to recover from that crippling body blow, but also the players coming up behind, Payne Stewart. Uh, is it going to be his turn? Will Dave Barr hang on? What about Seddy? Young Rick Fair is still there at even. Tom Kite, Dennis Watson. Much can happen now. The whole field have closed in, and it's almost uh, an electrified atmosphere here. A little bit of wind getting up. You can see the flag there just moving. Uh, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. I wonder what thoughts he has. Well, he said he's going to keep trying to do his best, and that's exactly what he's got to do. He's got to try and steady himself and try and start hitting the ball in the middle of the club again. In the end, one way or another, the United States Open always provides a test of character, and here it is for Tsi Chung Chen of Taiwan, leading since the very first day, since the second hole on the very first day, and suddenly in one hole, it all ran away like water through a sieve. Here was his fourth and fifth shots. All right, there. He hits the ball, and as Peter described, he comes through with the club, and it goes up uh, to the left. I've seen a lot of amateur players do that. Never a professional in a situation like that. Keep following them live. They're on the hole ahead now. Andy North with his second shot suddenly tie for the lead in the open. Just when everything was going wrong for him. Hitting the ball badly. What you've just done, what uh, TC's done is give everybody a lot of hope. see this. You let other people in the door. Now, I thought Once that after he did this, yes, Jim, there... Now, the official there to the left is Jim Hand. President of the USGA. Right. Observer with this group. And Chin turned to him. See if I remember this. Well, as if to say, back to him live if, now. Well, it's up to the player, and the player's going to say, I hit it twice. It's obvious the ball couldn't get over there any other way. <laughs> now, he hit a terrible iron on the last hole. What happens here? Okay, not the way he's been hitting the irons for three and a half days. Drawing back. Jim on tour, an eight is called a snowman and not a happy little snowman. <laughs> he's got a little downturn to his, what should be a smile. And that can really shake you up. Now, we've talked about his character and his poise and all the things that he's done. He has really got to regroup now. Dave Barr, suddenly a contender. A contender, he's one shot out of the lead on the seventh fairway. And he's playing well. Good Still shot. Right there, right there. North and Chen tie for the lead. Barr one back. Payne Stewart two back. Remember, he had an eagle out of the bunker on the second hole. Sevi Ballesteros, an ominous presence. He's parred every hole so far. Some with difficulty, but he's parred them all. In position to make a move. And young Rick Fair. And what? Tom Kite and Watson. Suddenly, every, all of these people, as you say, have some hope. Well, he, he's just uh, just thrown away at least three shots there. Now you, well, well, shows you. Well, you know, Sandy Tatum, the former president of the USGA, has said that the secret of golf is controlling anxieties mm. on every shot, and particularly when you come into a situation like this. Bob Rosberg is out there. Bob, have you been able to, to really pinpoint the scoring on that last hole? Well, I talked to Jim Hand, the president of the USGA, about it, and he said there was no no argument about it at all, that uh, Chen talked to him about it and said he'd hit it twice, and that's just, that adds up to eight. Sure does. Have you ever seen a, a, a player in situation like this do that, Rossi? I mean, I've, I've, I've done it, you know, fooling around. I've seen a lot of people do it, Dave. I don't think uh, that I can ever remember anything quite like that. We saw Clampett go under the ball at uh, Cherry Hills on the first hole, if you'll remember. Right. And not move it, but he didn't hit it twice. May I get into this? I've done it many times from a bunker. I've, oh, no. <laughs> Okay. Dave Barr, who started the day two under, now three under, one under on today's round, despite a bogey on the first hole. 
Look at the determination in the face now. Jerry, I'm taking a break at this point. He's got a tough putt here to get, get close to him. Come on. Oh, dear. Come on. Look up. Look at this. See how fast that is rolling? Yep. For the first time, you can see the, <laughs> the feelings in his face. He's been imperturbable up to now. What a tough turn of events for this young man. Half a world away from his home. Playing absolutely, totally consistent golf until one hole. And it wasn't as if he hit, you know, three horrible shots or anything. He happened to put one in the rough, left it short. But he missed it on the wrong side. If yep. you missed that hole today, you had to be left. So you'd have some green to to work with. To the right in those trees was the one place. It's easy to say now, but you had to be left. You saw Dave Barr and Rick Fair both to the left on that hole. Now, if Andy makes... And T.C. should miss, all of a sudden that could, could be a six-shot swing in two holes. Well, but he's got that for a par, and Chen has a lot for a par. All the way from there. I mean, Andy North looked like he was on the verge of a desperate situation. He, he couldn't hit the ball off the tee. You pointed out he tried to lay up once and went into the bunker. And suddenly in one hole, it all turned around. It's the part about any sport. When you get ahead of a guy or, or you get out in the lead, you can't let up for a second and give the other people any hope. You've got to just, while you're out there, go ahead and kill them when you get the chance. Pummel them. <laughs> for the par. He's lost the lead. Maybe. It certainly appears. This then, to take the lead in the U.S. Open, about, what would you say, no more than 10 minutes or 15 minutes after he trailed by four. And seemingly couldn't get the ball in the fairway. taken the lead seven years after his triumph in the U.S. Open at Cherry Hills. Here we are with an update on what has happened in these few hours of our final round of the U.S. Open. Golf tournaments do indeed begin on Sunday afternoon. While the whole world was remarking on the beautiful consistency of this person, will young Mr. Chen, on his golf swing made in Taiwan, and Aaron Foriron at the fifth hole, and the whole world changed. What that quadruple bogey did was give the rest of the field a quadruple bypass, down to those who were at even par. Ballesteros and Rick Fair are only four shots off the lead. And a lot of the marvelous golf that was played earlier now means something else. Shots like Payne Stewart made at the second hole, when he nobody thought much of it at the time. The uh, second hole, of course, is a par five, and he had bunkered it in two. And here was the shot by Mr. Payne Stewart, who at the moment was uh, eight shots behind the leader. a nice right-hand turn from the left-hand lane, and he's in there with an eagle. He picked up two, but it didn't seem to mean much. It now means very much because Mr. Stewart is just two strokes off the lead in this tournament. In the meantime, the leader, Mr. Chen, was playing the same brilliant style of golf that sustained him for the first three rounds. Here was his shot in the second hole. Par five, one and two with an iron. He two-putted that for a birdie, and he was off and running. Then David Barr, two under, but still six shots off the lead. With this putt, 
at the fifth hole, which later would become a theater of tragedy. Beautiful birdie, and he now is very much involved, being just one shot off the lead in this tournament. And now here is where this tournament changed radically. A double hit. One, two. He almost hold the next shot for a six, trying valiantly to stop the bleeding. But of course, he went on to have an eight, and our whole tournament has changed. The new leader is Andy North. And don't go away, because there's a lot of golf yet to be played. There certainly is, and that's the way they stand. North by one over Dave Barr and Si Chung Chen. And the others here now have hope. This is Peter Jennings in New York. TWA Flight 847 has now been on the ground in Beirut for eight hours and five minutes. To say that the situation is fraught with tension is to understate it. It is now dark, seven hours different, five minutes to 11 in Beirut, and the darkness has simply enhanced the tension. An example, ABC's Charles Glass is in Beirut. Charles, the most recent example. The airport has just been told from the tower, told the hijackers on the plane that they're turning off the airport light. They told the plane that the hijackers uh, should get out of Beirut, that they should refuel quickly because they said that they saw on their radar planes, aircraft approaching north from the direction of Israel. We cannot confirm whether or not the planes are actually on their way, but we do know that the tower, the Shiite Amor militiamen in the tower, told the plane that, plane that Israeli aircraft are coming this way and that they have told them to refuel quickly to get out of Beirut and they have turned off the Beirut airport light. Thank you, Charlie. We want to emphasize that <coughs> that, <coughs> excuse me, that is not necessarily true, but it's a very good example of the situation for the hostages on board, the people who are trying to negotiate this moment. And uh, to give you some sense of time and distance, Beirut and the Israeli border are only about 65 miles apart. Charles, a short while ago, we had a, another hostage released, Robert Peel, who was taken to the American University Hospital in Beirut. What has he had to say there? We've heard a couple of quotes about the treatment they've been getting on board the plane. Peel said that he was personally not treated very badly. He said conditions were bad, they were afraid. He spoke by telephone at uh, the American University Hospital to his son Bill in the United States and told his son Bill that he didn't even know that his wife had been released. He did say though, all, that although he was now safe in the hospital and that he was out, he was in the hospital because he had rib injuries from a previous accident before the flight. But although he was out, he would rather be back on the plane with his other son, Bob Jr. Charles, thank you very much. Charles Glass, who has been standing by near the airport uh, in Beirut for a great many hours now. So Robert Peel talking to his family. We talked to his wife a short while ago. She uh, didn't know very much either, so we're briefing her in Paris, and, and he's briefing his son in the United States, and the State Department is listening to the, to the press reports, or we're listening to Lebanese radio and to our own correspondents. It is a terribly confused situation. At 7 o'clock this evening, we'll try to put this all in perspective on an ABC special, 7 o'clock, 6 o'clock Eastern time. To repeat, the lights are now out at Beirut Airport. The hijackers want that aircraft to be refueled. It has been moved closer to the air terminal uh, in order to be refueled. That does not need, mean it is going to leave, but there is a considerable amount of tension as they try to negotiate the release of the hostages. Back to golf. And, of course, we'll have more on that hostage situation on ABC News later tonight. The leaderboard for the U.S. Open. Andy North, the new leader, by one shot over Dave Barr and the former leader, Mr. Chen. With Payne Stewart, Ballesteros, Watkins, and Watson now all very much involved. This is on videotape at the seventh hole, Andy North's second shot. In trouble off the tee again and in the bunker with his second. Chen had driven into the left rough. Sailing it up the right side. Just short of the green. This is the new green, I think, this year, David, isn't it, at this hole? I don't, Jack, I don't think so. I don't think it's a... It, you mean a new green in, in the well, change I mean, they of position? Well, I it back. Yes, yes. right. Very few changes, uh, just the bunker at 12 that they put in, they added a couple of tees. You don't need to do much with a course like Oakland Hills. It so now we'll have Chen's third shot. Yeah. 
My, my, I wonder what his heart rate is right now, huh? I say this, that's a great shot. He's got to be thinking of that shot back at the fifth hole. Yeah. And the bogey at the hole before. But that was a very nice touch. So the battle now has been joined, uh, although Ballesteros has just bogey to go one over. But Payne Stewart and Dave Barr inserted themselves very much into this. I think the man you might really watch is Payne Stewart. Mm. Andy North, third shot. And here is Payne Stewart. Rather nondescript dresser. <laughs> I saw him in long pants the other day. And didn't recognize didn't, him. Really, <laughs> honest to goodness, didn't. But he's got a difficult little shot here. And he can tell you something about a change, the way that he lost to Byron Nelson this year. Mm -hmm. With the double bogey at the last hole to get in a playoff and then lose it to Bob Eastwood. So he knows about that kind of heartbreak. Ooh. Got a bad break there. It looked like it hit right on the fringe of the green there and just gave it a little scoot forward. That, pretty nice shot, though. Let's see if it if it does, in fact, if they could freeze it right there. It looked mm -hmm. like it just hit the edge of the carpet, just like the edge of a carpet and shot it because it looked like it was coming out very soft. He's going through this series of really difficult holes but fair holes here at Oakland Hills that begin at 8 8, 9, 10 and 11 they might get a little break at 12 downwind today but especially paint now let's see this if, if it in yeah. fact lands just at the edge there looked like it mm -hmm. and just kicked it forward I'll have to say it did so I'm <laughs> correct right <laughs> now Andy North and this is for par to remain the leader It's only the seventh hole, though. That's right. Does he well, have many of those left? Uh, he, he's, uh, yes, I'm sure he does. <laughs> of course, again, at some point, uh, you got TC's got to make this to, you know, after yeah. that hole that we talked about, and then a three putt the next hole, and here's Dave Barr for par at 11. I don't think it's 11, but. Mm. So he hit drop. Back to two. Two shots behind Andy North. Now Chen. Ten left ahead of him too. He's uh, come on, TC. Let's get going here. Ten is now two, six over on a day. There's five over on a day. Six over the last three holes. Par for Payne Stewart. Yes, nicely in. Big par. Woo. Three-way tie between Chen, Barr, and Stewart now at two under. Now, uh, here is the eighth hole, a very difficult challenge. It's long, it's uphill, and today it is into the wind. And a narrow drive because those fairway bunkers are definitely in play. Of course, in there, it's almost a cinch bogey. But even after a good drive, you've got a, a long iron, usually, uh, usually a long iron second shot uphill. There's a good look at it. The fairway slopes right to left as you're looking at it this way. The leaderboard. 
Well, all of a sudden, Lanny has been playing up and down here today. Is only <laughs> as, as he five does. Five shots off. And he can streak it, you know. for the leaders. See the moving galleries, which are quite large today. Final day of the U.S. Open. Those brown marks across the fairways will be gone by September. Leader Andy North, two shots ahead of Chen, Barr, and Stewart. As we go now to Dave Barr. At the ninth tee. All right, but back now to the eighth tee. Andy hasn't hit a fairway with his driver yet, uh, Jack. I know. Been in the trap or the rough with it, hasn't he? And it's getting nasty out here, too. Doesn't like that, does he? No. See him turn away. And that ball is way left again. He got a good break. It hit the uh, hit the crowd and came back where he might have a shot and not have to contend with the trees. It's getting very windy out here, Jack, and getting cold again. And you're going right into the wind on this hole, aren't you? Yes, 8 and 9 will play very hard, and 15, 16, and 18 will be killers today. So the leader once again... Badly off the tee. some problems. You can imagine the shock to your nervous system, yeah. Jack, when you do that. This is the ninth tee on videotape. A one iron by Dave Barr of British Columbia. And just short of the trap in the rough. With a very, very delicate second well, shot. It just shows you how, how long that hole is playing. Right into the teeth of the wind as Andy North at the moment leads by two. Andy North off the fairway, but as Bob Rosberg said, a very fortunate break there coming back off the spectators. Didn't hurt anybody and he's found a reasonably good lie. He's the championship leader by two. And, uh, well, we Alice has been in golf for 60, 70 years or more. Uh, nothing amazes me really anymore. You think you've seen everything? And something like this. Boy, what a shot this is, Peter. He smashed that, Bob, as hard as he could go, and a nice kick. Well, he took the bull by the horns there, didn't he, Bob? He gave that a tremendous crash. Great shot. Chen is not in the bunker. He's actually in the, in the grass and a little finger of the bunker going down into it. He got a break in as far as the lie is concerned because he'd be able to move it forward, but he doesn't have much of a stance. He's going to play a wood shot, though. He's gripped way down on a wood. Well, if he gets a low cutter, I suppose, he could chase it up the fairway. Very hard to keep your balance, Peter. Uh, I took a nosedive as soon as they hit it. Yeah, just beat it into the face of the bunker and uh, trying to be too greedy, trying to do too much. And uh, he'll have time to reflect on that little chip that he played at the fifth. Here you'll see it again. He, he half smothers it. Wall his weights back on his right foot. He's trying to play a sort of forcing, cutting wood shot, but really takes all the loft off the club and it just drills it into the bank in front of him. It sort of half smothers it. He half tops it and smothers it. And it's a sort of... Uh, 
top spin. It's one of those Borg top spin from the back of the court type shots that really aren't needed on a golf course. Tee shots were here. What a different uh, address position. Although uh, Chen's just started his club back, his hands are much lower. Club head moving away first. And the North there in the in a very elegant position. Look at the width of swing there from North. And Chen back. Of course, entirely different build. Now, look at the top of the backswing there, Andy North. Huge arc. Now, very different from TC. Now, they both get in a good position there. See how similar they are now. Club head being thrown at the ball right past the chin. Chen's head coming up a little bit too soon. That's why the ball will be pushed away to the right. Here's Dave Barr now at the ninth. Missed the green. This long, short hole. Flips it up, pretty good. Very good, in fact. Chen, third shot, and it really is all coming apart at the moment. Well, there you see what he's got to do. Slightly uphill. to uh, hold this putt. He's had a couple of uh, putts over the last two or three holes. This sort of distance that he's missed. And that's pushed him way back to two under. Six strokes he's thrown away. But all is not yet lost, although Andy North is two ahead. Larry Watkins and Dennis Watson had one over a creeping up into the leaderboard. And even Johnny Miller and the defending champion Fuzzy Zeller at three over aren't really out of it. Here's Barr for a par, and he gets it. That's a good putt. Good three. So he's completed nine holes in fine style. He's done them in 35, which is par. And Barr there, you see, tied now uh, Payne Stewart and T.C. Chen for uh, two under par. Best rounds of the day, 68s from David Graham and Hal Sutton. But Andy North leading the way. Seve's, uh, Seve Ballesteros has just dropped strokes at the 8th and the 9th. But still, you see, there are only half a dozen strokes or so behind, and you've, you've seen what can happen. So it's uh, with these very punishing closing holes here the 16th in particular 16 17 18 much can happen but Andy North looks very determined indeed he's had a tremendous amount of problems uh, over the last four or five years he hasn't been very well he's had some uh, bone arm knee problems joint problems but he's uh, he looks very determined a very good putt from down there. Interesting man, Andy North, in his spare time, a football coach. I wonder how he got interested in that. Well, it's been a lot of fun. Coach McLean moved into our neighborhood when he got the job seven or eight years ago, and we became very good friends. And it started out calling kids, recruiting, and that sort of thing, and it's just evolved every year, and he's had me down the field the last three or four years, and it's really been fun. It's, it's been neat to be around the kids, uh, and there's nothing like 17, 18, 19 year olds to keep your enthusiasm up, and I think it's helped me through the last three years when I really haven't played well, and I've really struggled, and I've had some other problems, and it's, it's been nice to get away from golf totally in the fall and be around the kids, and you know, your outlook changes, and it, it's fun to be up all the time. Andy North, another side of Andy North, the football coach. Now, T.C. Chen, this for a par four, eight hole. No, and we'll be looking for a plane as soon as possible to Taipei at this rate. And that's rather sad. All caused by a wayward four iron in the first place. And then, perhaps trying to be too fancy, but at the moment, 
Now the, the, the whole brain, the golfing brain, is now like scrambled eggs. Now can he slip it back into gear? I don't know. Sun's coming out. Andy North has this for a par. This will keep him two ahead of Payne Stewart and Dave Barr. So he stays four under, and we go to the tenth. Dave Barr, only two behind. Good hole this tenth, 454 yards. Narrow, sloping fairway. And he's missed the fairway, and looks to have settled down a bit. All the fairway tilts from right to left as we look back. And there's the green at the end. And there's the green at the end. A couple of bunkers either side. And that was recorded. Bars found his ball. We're going to the ninth. And the final two ball out on the course. North and Chen. Looks simple enough, doesn't it? Big green. Bunkers all around. 217 yards. But look where they've put the flag today. Cheeky little spot. flying fade I suppose 217 yards this hole and there's a view from the other end so up ahead at the 10th Dave Barr's second shot Payne Stewart birdie at the 12th seconds, only 10 seconds. Cuts it in for his par, and he stays at two under. Now back to the ninth. Andy North, one iron. And he'd love to get a nice, clean hit, just left of the pin, feathering to the right. Looks as if he may have just uh, pulled that away, left he has, and he's... He's finding bunkers with monotonous regularity, and that's settled. That's nestled a bit. That's not very nice. Not nice at all. Well, he's extricated himself very well from the sand so far today, but he, he may have a very awkward stance there as well, and the ball half plugged in that bunker away on the left. T.C. Chen. He really, uh, he, he's not out of it by any means, but he's been on such a run over the last three or four holes that, uh, I mean, a disastrous run, that it will show a tremendous strength of character if he can even start getting a few, bur a few pars together. If he could cover these next few holes in par, that will show tremendous character. He's got a little wood here, a little four wood. leads the way at two under, a four under, I should say, two ahead of Payne Stewart and Dave Barr. Some other scores for you, the defending champion there, Fuzzy Zeller. We'll take a break. Andy North, who after a couple of holes today looked like he was going south, is now the leader in the United States Open Golf Championships by two strokes over Payne Stewart and Dave Barr and Si Chung Chen of Taiwan, who led when the day began, is now in fourth place. The young man, unfortunately, has lost seven strokes to par in the last four holes, four of them on one hole on the fifth, and that started it all. Here is the leader, but he's in a bunker on the par three ninth hole. But he's had a lot of practice out of these bunkers in this nine. It's 
Peter said, uh, Jack said, we've all said, just uh, he's hit a lot of hooks, too. Got a great four with a little bit of a break at the eighth hole after a hook drive. Yes, this I'll tell you about the contour here. Yep. But that's look at this going away from the hole now, and we're still moving. There, just coming to rest now. Long, long putt for the par three. Now Payne Stewart. No man has ever been eight shots behind going into the last round of the U.S. Open and won. He was eight strokes behind this morning. Now he's two. Get over. Every schoolboy knows Arnold Palmer was seven strokes behind in 1960, and he won. Dave Barr. Long birdie attempt for the Canadian. He must have hit a good shot out of that right rough to get to where he is. Uh, I was going to say, are you kidding me? <laughs> Now, trying to zero in, get that concentration back again. It's Tse Chung Chen. Try to somehow put out of your mind the last four holes. Dennis Watson on the left for an eagle at 12. <laughs> Watson, who's at one over, but he could suddenly be at one under. No. The touch is gone. Just uh, looks as though he's lost it completely. It's... Uh... He finished his puck come up short. I think Peter put it right. Anybody that's ever played this game, and when something like that happens to you, it, it does seem like your brain turned to scramble eggs. Watson, as you saw, left it short. We'll have a uh, reasonable putt for a birdie on 12 to bring him back to even par. But now Andy North, the leader, with a problem of his own. Up ahead of him, remember, Dave Barr, one hole ahead, Payne Stewart, four holes ahead, and Stewart is putting the holes behind him, which in the last analysis of the U.S. Open usually is what you want to do. It, it's not birdie opportunities that lie ahead, it's trouble opportunities. Payne Stewart with a, yet another birdie opportunity here. Long putt, though, and he's got to go oh, yeah. up over that hill at 13. He went out in 32 strokes, three under par. And in case you're wondering, Stewart knows how the tournament stands. Andy North drops to three under. Payne Stewart. Watch that one move now. Mm. We'll have trouble perhaps staying at two under. At the moment, North's lead has dropped to one stroke over Dave Barr and Payne Stewart. Another difficult par putt for Tse Chung Chen. I guess they were all but getting out the firecrackers for the celebration on the island of Taiwan, but it's going fast. Come on, TC, knock this in. Chung Chen, six over par, 41 on the front line. But with all of that, he's still only two shots back of the leader. Absolutely right. Well, there is the scorecard, and the blue ones were not only bogeys, but one quadruple bogey, or as you said, a snowman, so-called from its conformation. The two little circles of an eight. There, there it is. I've played those first four holes just as like a machine and the drive at five. But now, opportunity, in a sense, beckons to him again. As you said, nine holes to play, two shots out. Andy North is not playing particularly well. He's found a lot of bunkers. He's been scram scrambling for what he's got. Andy is two over for the day. He shot 37. And they have brought a lot of people back into the ball game, one of which is Dennis Watson here. Yes. This is for a birdie on the par five, 12th. And he gets it. So he's back to even par, only three shots out. 
Payne Stewart. Yeah, he's missed his he, far yeah. putt, if you remember. So this is for a bogey. Remember, we, we saw him make the long birdie attempt, but he went way past, and he's missed that coming back, and now this is for the bogey. All right. So he is one under. He drops into a tie with Seat Chung Chen. Oh, my goodness. We have one, two, three, four of them within two strokes, five within three strokes. And he knows. He didn't like that either. Nope. I think he's only had maybe one or two good tee shots all day. Bob Rossberg, do you get a mood feeling out there? That's in the right rough. Well, he just has not hit a good shot yet off the tee. And he's really fighting. It looks to me like he shortened up his swing a little, trying to get the ball in the fairway, and he just can't do it. Okay. There it is, graphically displayed before your eyes. It's going to be wild from here. Well, tomorrow night on ABC's Monday Night Baseball, the first place Chicago Cubs look to defend their division crown against the New York Mets. Or you'll see the defending league champion San Diego Padres battle their rival Los Angeles Dodgers. Action begins live at 8 p.m. Eastern tomorrow on ABC's Monday Night Baseball. And next Saturday on ABC's Wide World of Sports, you'll see one of the best around, welterweight champion Donald Curry, move up a weight class to fight Pablo Baez in a junior middleweight bout live from Atlantic City. And gold medalist Carl Lewis and many more at the United States Outdoor Track and Field Championships from Indianapolis next Saturday at 4.30 Eastern Time on Wide World of Sports. Lanny Watkins. Four shots off the lead. Almost, almost only two shots off the lead. What a marvelous iron struck. Good shot. Andy North. Catch the green ball. Catch the green. Whoa. Stop. Yeah. Came out a little hot. Nestled in the rough and not too far to go to the pin. Now TC Chen. That ball below his feet. I think it'd be tough to get close from there because this usually makes the ball go left to right. The pins in the back to left of the green. Just a little to the right of the flag, David, but pretty good. Oh, wonderful shot. That is the TC Chen of old. A six iron. Brilliantly played here into the 10th green. Got very close all of a sudden. So what Chen did was grant amnesty to an awful lot of people out here. Yes, he did. And Lanny's had some round today after starting with a double bogey. Mm. David Barr. If you're going to play, Jack, right. now's the time to play. And what a way to strike it at, a, at that 11th hole. If you can get by there with a birdie, you are really getting yourself some insurance. Twice the winner of this championship at the 18th Hail Irwin. This is for par. Oops. Well, here we'll finish at plus five. And even par today, 70. For 
Taylor. That's good playing. Mm -hmm. 285. Not good enough this week, but that's still very good. There you see the Folsom Gallery at 18. Where yesterday they ejected a person when he yelled, Go Tigers, just as Seve was about to putt. As Fuzzy Zeller said, Seve certainly knows an awful lot about the Tigers, doesn't he? Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're back now for Andy North here. Looked like he had a pretty good lie there, Jack. Mm -hmm. I couldn't tell. If he can get that club under there, then he can put a look, make it a lot softer shot. If he can't slide the club under there, it's going to come out pretty fast. Nicely done. Mm -hmm. Oh, more. Even better, uh, <laughs> or bad news, it came out too soft. Too soft is right. Leads by one from Dave Barr of Canada, who has just put a marvelous shot. Here's Lanny Watkins now for birdie at the 13th. After that great shot, he hit in there, and now Lanny moves. There's three shots off the lead. T.C. Chen. This is for birdie. This would really give him a lot of heart here. We put him back within one stroke at the worst of the lead. It's a hole. Oh. Kind of had a feeling he might do that, Jack. You know, he's left so many short, short. here. Mm -hmm. Just really took a run at that one. Payne Stewart. Just a moment ago at 14. And he misses the green. Just bogeyed the hole before. You know, Bobby Jones, I think, said nobody wins the U.S. Open. Somebody always loses it. Well, that may be true more often than not. There's a golden opportunity here for half a dozen players. And here's one of them. Birdie attempt. Tap in for par, and he remains one shot behind the leader. And here is the leader. If he misses, then that puts Dave Barr right into a tap of the lead. That ball went left. Wow. Well, Dave doesn't know it yet, but he's tied for the lead in the U.S. Open. And Andy still has the rather difficult 11th hole to play. Well, they're all difficult right now. Right now, I, I guess so, Dave. They just want to get it on the fairway and on the green <laughs> and, and go home. And that's a lot harder than it, than it may look. Bar. Now he's only one shot behind the leaders. <laughs> Another look at the putt by Andy North. It's starting to go right, and now it comes back left. And avoids the cup. Just catches the edge there. That's a great shot of what a putt looks like. Now, if you were watching that without the, the blow up and the slow motion, it would look very smooth running down there. <laughs> looked like Magic Johnson was dribbling that ball down there. Co-leaders Sandy North and Dave Barr with Payne Stewart and Chen just one shot behind and with Lanny Watkins coming into the picture very much. The 11th hole that we said is so difficult need a perfect drive here almost you have to position your drive and then this green which is so narrow and long and a severe pitch from back to front Se Chung Chen
That looks perfect. Absolutely beautiful drive, but he did get kind of a bad break in that he's going to stand so far below the ball, Jack. Uh -huh. uh, the ball did not quite get down the hill enough to have him give him a good shot. I think it's because the fairway's a little softer today, Bob, after the rain yesterday? Well, driving into the wind, David, the ball didn't go, but maybe eight or ten feet after it hit, and it just didn't trickle down. Yes, I believe it is because of the moisture. I'll tell you one thing, I think we can all say that Oakland Hills has won again. <laughs> And once again, this Andy ball is Clark. so far to the left, you cannot believe it. This is over the gallery, down, and but sitting up, not bad. It avoided a tree over there, and it's sitting in the area where people have walked, so it's not too bad. There's the shot Andy will have if they don't destroy his golf ball down no, there before a, he gets to and it. And not a bad angle. Uh, no. the right of the fairway brings a tree into play that uh, Jay Haas hit yesterday. But it must be making Andy very uncomfortable the way his tee shots are going. It's his fourth shot. Fourth Payne shot Stewart. for Payne Stewart. Everyone wants to win, obviously, but no one is sort of taking charge here. Here's what happened. He had hit a second shot over the green, if you remember, and here is his third. Got a little too cute. Boy, do I know that shot. Oh, it, Jack, you play in this tournament, and you'll guarantee you'll hit one of these before too long. <laughs> uh, it's too bad for Payne. He bogeyed the hole before and dropped now to even par. He makes that putt. Andy North, Andy's, let's take a look at this, Dave. Okay, well, Rossi observed that he shortened... It looked as though he shortened his swing a little bit. Let's see when he gets to the top, if he gets to parallel. Looks pretty good there. Maybe that right elbow is a little high. Looks in pretty good position. Starts down. Right heel's a little high. Left heel looked off the ground there, which means you're spinning out to the left. And, of course, spinning out to the left with a good player usually means the ball is going to go left. And he has hit a gang of hooks today. Rossi? Well, he's got the kind of a lie that uh, he's got to play a shot up into the wind. The wind is blowing very strongly into him. Now, it doesn't look at the up at the green. The flag is hardly moving. But I'm up here on the hill to the right, and it is blowing quite hard, so it'll be coming out of his left and into, the, into his face with probably a uh, six iron somewhere in that vicinity, unless he tries to really jump on a seven. Well, as we saw, that flag stick today is cut at the back of the green. And the green slopes from back to front. Well, it's approximately 160 yards to go. One thing you got going for you here, Jack, is the gallery is packed in so tightly just over the green. I'm not saying that that's the place to put it. Uh -huh. but if you do try and shoot it back there, it's not going to go very far. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Payne Stewart, we're just told, has made double bogey and has dropped now to plus one. Now we're getting it changed again to just the bogey. No pain if that is true had bogey there he is at even par even par is really looking good though oh. well just think if pain hadn't bogeyed the last two he is tied for the lead straight left to right if an awful <laughs> lot of people got invited to the party all of a sudden didn't they Payne stewart is even lanny watkins even 44 look at ballesteros Come back a bit. Andy now for his second shot at 11. Yeah. Yeah. Once again in the bunker. Rough to bunker. He's done that quite a few times. Now 
he just wants to stay with par now. Just get it up in one putt. He's choked up on this club quite a bit here, Jack, because the ball is up above his feet. That's the first thing you do when the ball is above your feet, and this ball should be a right-to-left shot, a hook. But your swing is a little flatter. Good-looking little shot. I don't think he got out of that what he that was a good shot looked like it might take one hop back toward the flag it just really checked up Rossi. Andy North and Dave Barr and they only lead by one it is here at the US Open Andy North and Dave Barr at two under and Mr. Chen at one under and some other big names beginning to close situations getting very tight Andy North in trouble at the 11th. This was his third shot. This is on videotape. A simple looking bunker shot, but watch. Thinned it, got the blade too near the ball, right over into the gallery. And as Bob Rosberg was saying, the gallery are packed tight, so that ball won't have gone too far over. Dave Barr flips one up here at the 12th. That's his third shot, what a good one. Chance for a birdie. Might go three under. Danny Watkins with that birdie at the 13th. Uh, Watkins for another birdie. This time at the 14th. Got one at the 13th, and he has. Oof. Ballesteros has just had two birdies in a row, so he was three over. Now back to one over, and getting within sight of the lead. Although they. They're all playing slightly like eccentric millionaires. Nobody wants to uh, sort of grab hold of the championship or no one's able to grab hold of it. A lot of people marking time and what an opportunity for a new name to come through, but they're making heavy weather of it. That's how it is, but Andy North having played three over the back of this very tricky 11th green and uh, it's almost certain he's going to drop one stroke here. Here he is with his little chip. Oh, we've seen some crucial chip shots, haven't we, this afternoon? Payne Stewart saw Mr. Chen uh, at the fifth. Can he play a nice little floater? <laughs> Well, he played it very well. He almost had to miss hit it to get it close. Uh, kept the rhythm, kept it going, and he, he looks unhappy. It's all a struggle. He's not hitting the ball well, and it's a tribute to his character that he's, uh, he's still at the top of the leaderboard because he's hardly hit a decent shot off the, off the tee, certainly. He's been in a five or six bunkers, it seems, almost a bunker a hole. And it's only his tenacity and spirit that's keeping him going, but keeping him going it is. Mr. Chen with a long putt up the green for a three. And some time ago, uh, Gordon Kosh, the uh, Scottish Walker Cup player, said a very interesting thing to me. He said there was a difference between conscious and unconscious competence. And by that he meant that people like Ben Hogan years ago and Jack Nicholas, Tom Watson perhaps, and Lee Trevino, when things were very tight, their brains became very clear and they could in, uh, in all consciousness play well whereas others are all right as long as they're going along in their own private little dream world. And as soon as the pressure, as soon as they're aware of the pressure, the house of cards crumbles. And that's what happened to this man today. Sad, but true. Conscious and unconscious. And that looked good if it runs, but it won't. And he's coming up off those putts too soon. He's not striking them with the authority that he once was. But this next hour or so is going to be fascinating to see those with... Uh, here's one. This man's got uh, that cold-bloodedness about him. When it's going well, it's hard to beat. No, that was always knocked a little left. You can't really believe it, but it always looked left. Now, this man here, I think, got that little one for a bogey. Now, here's a man who is really a little edgy. On the left, 
Dave Bars. A little bit nervous, the putting stroke's a little short and quick, but he's still there. Chen on the right for a par at the 11th. Good putt. That could calm him down. And Dave Barr. This with a birdie, this for a birdie, this would take him into the lead in the championship. In fact, could give him a he could be in, in, in the lead by two. But watch the timing of the stroke. That was a better hit. That was good. Another fine mess you got me into. Uh, here's Andy North. And he gets it in, but that's a stroke gone. So he drops back. The day bar moves on. In fact, he's three under now and leading the championship and holes are running out. But so much can happen over these last few holes. There's the greenkeeper there down on the green taking the flag and the cup away, thwarting any souvenir hunters. So down they come from the 11th green, 12th tee now. Four, uh, 560 yards, longest hole on the course, par five, but reachable in two. We saw Dennis Watson through the green. There it is, bunkers on the left, a little group of bunkers on the edge of the fairway on the left, and many a bunker up round by the green. Elevated T. And Chen now, having got that, that uh, putt at the last hole. Only two putts, but what an important uh, second putt that was for him. see a stroke gone here. He's in the lead by two. But unless he gets a, a little miracle, I don't think that's going to be there, the situation for more than ten minutes or so. So it's all heating up and the old pulse rate's quickening. Dave Barr leads the way. But there's a lot more to happen yet before tonight's close of play. Yep. Back at the U.S. Open, where one is tempted to recall Casey Stengel's line to the old original Mets, can't anybody here play this game over the last few holes? The simple fact is that everybody here on that leaderboard can play this game and play it very well. But on the last nine holes of any U.S. Open golf championship, we've seen it time after time, anxiety attacks are rampant. Andy North really hasn't been hitting the ball well all day. Nice. He had luck again. again. Same old headway. Left. Ross? Left-hand bunker again. Yep, there it is. We just get, got Rossi, a quick how many it. bunkers has he been in today? Have you kept count? Well, I've lost count. Oh. Uh, that's about, <laughs> right. I think that's eight, to tell you the truth, David. He certainly leads for bunkers in regulation. <laughs> Be a new stat. Can uh, TC knock it on the green from where he is? TC hit a good drive, but I don't think he can. Dave Barr, the leader by two strokes, and there is his mistake. All right, part of what's happening, okay? Yes. Andy's been in a slump for a long time. All of a sudden, 
It looked like a pretty good shot there. Yeah, on the par 5, 12 hole. Even though he's won a U.S. Open, to get out and, and all of a sudden get handed the lead, now he hasn't been there. It's a little easier playing from behind. Well, a lot yet to come, including the decision, but right now another special report from Peter Jennings. This is Peter Jennings in New York again. Uh, when we were reported to you last time, uh, perhaps half an hour ago, it's now midnight in Beirut, we told you that the tower at Beirut Airport was telling the hijackers on board that they had seen on their radar the movement of Israeli planes, I beg your pardon, planes coming from the direction of Israel. Um, almost every, virtually every source we have talked to, our own monitoring service, the United Nations in southern Lebanon, are unable to confirm that. So we'd like to knock down uh, any sense of... Uh, anxiety that people here had that there were aircraft heading in the direction of the airport from south. Chris Harper is on the line from Beirut now and we are hearing reports of some flares being sent up at the airport but Chris I gather this is not altogether unusual. That's right. Uh, Peter, uh, flares in the, on the Beirut airport are, are very normal, frankly. I mean, there's a lot of fighting all around the city, as you well know. Uh, in essence, what you have right now is that the control tower told the hijackers that there were planes moving in from Israel. Uh, but we have not been able to confirm that. And in fact, the United Nations says that no planes or helicopters have moved in from the south. There is an Israeli gunboat off the shore, however. This is the one that's been there most of the day, and is that, do you think, why they're sending up the flares to keep an eye on it? That's exactly right, Peter. Uh, the Shiite militia here uh, wants to know what's going on out to sea. It's about a mile off the shore. Uh, one thing that is positive that we can tell you is that uh, um, all sources tell us that the negotiations between Navi Berry, the Shiite leader, and the hijackers on board are going well. Chris, thank uh, you very much. That's a good, uh, good, good, uh, good news, but uh, obviously not complete. Chris, thank you very much indeed. To, to, to restate, uh, no confirmation that any planes are heading in the direction of Israel, that Amal, the Shiites themselves, are sending up the flares at Beirut Airport, perhaps to keep an eye on an Israeli gunboat that has been offshore for most of the day. We'll have a complete report on a 7 o'clock special Eastern Time, 6 o'clock Central. I hope you'll join us then. Back to you, Jim McKay. No Canadian has ever won the United States Open Golf Championship, although they've been playing in it on and off since the very first one. There was a Canadian in the first U.S. Open in 1895 at Newport. Dave Barr is the leader, but he has his problems. He moved two at this point. Remember, he just stubbed one from off the green. On the par three hole, he laid two. His third shot, then. A good one, but leaving that for the bogey four. Well, he may not be happy with it, but anybody that's been in that part of the green pitching down that hill, that's a good shot that he just played. Andy North on the par 5, 12 with his third shot. He trailed by two when the day began. Suddenly the lead was handed to him, but he hasn't been able to hold it. He trails by two. Well, he's giving himself a birdie opportunity there. If you weren't with us... Si Chung Chen was breezing along as he has been for more than three days here when suddenly hit the fifth hole and errant four iron got him into trouble. He ended up with an eight on the hole, including hitting the ball twice with one stroke. Now Dave Barr. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care. It went in. It may not have been pretty, but it's all mine. However, he does lose a stroke to par. Dave Barr now at two under for the championship. One stroke ahead of Andy North and Si Chung Chen at North with, with a realistic chance for a birdie. Now, Chen is in the bunker, but he is only lying two on the par five hole. So, an outstanding bunker shot could give him a birdie opportunity, a decent one. And gee, what, what a tough situation. Well, you got to get it Look all at that first thing. Yeah. And, and the flagstick is pretty close. Oh, what a shot. Dave, we could uh, possibly have a three-way tie here in a few minutes. If they both make, they'll be tied with David, who's, who just played the hole ahead of him, number 13. And now we must again start giving credit and praise to this young man who's had the chance to go absolutely out of it, but wouldn't give up.
That's where this hits now. Just in mm. the tall fringe and kicks down. Okay. In the course of four holes, he went seven over par, and now he's coming back. Che Chung Chen. The momentum changes in this, in this round with every shot. No matter what happens with him today, he'll be a legend in his home country. From now on. So no Canadians ever won this? No Taiwanese has ever won this? <laughs> Andy North has. There's Dave Barr, who would be the first Canadian. Still clinging to a one-stroke lead on this long par four, 465. We're not very far from Canada here, so I'm sure there are a lot of Canadians in the gallery today following Dave. Andy North, birdie attempt. Would put him in a tie with David. Yep. No. Well, that was a good smooth stroke, and it just didn't break. Should we have a tie, as always in the United States Open, the playoff will be at 18 holes tomorrow. And we'll be here for that, of course. It'll be 4 to 5.30 Eastern Time, just to alert you to that possibility. In case you want to shorten your working day tomorrow somehow. Now for the par. came here this week with many people, all of us, I think, talking about the possibility of a foreign challenge. But we were talking about Seve Ballesteros and Bernhard Langer, the Masters champion. If Chen makes this putt, the foreign challenge will be Si Chung Chen and Dave Barr tie for the lead. Chung Chen of Taiwan. What an open we've got here. What an open we have at Oakland Hills. There it is. And what an open indeed, Jim. The United States Open on Sunday afternoon always provides dramatics, but none quite the same as we've seen here today. As you know by this time probably, it all turned around when the mo most flawless game of Mr. Chen snapped like a pair of chopsticks with a bad four-iron shot on the fifth hole and he went on to take a quadruple bogey eight. And that brought an awful lot of people back into the race or the party. But apparently they didn't want to be at the party. Andy North immediately took the lead and immediately almost lost it. We, having terrific difficulties off the tee, he's been in more sand than a hermit in the desert today. Uh, he subsequently lost it uh, to Dave Barr, who is in a little trouble now. And um, then uh, Payne Stewart made a charge and fell back, and Lanny Watkins made a charge and didn't get too far. And now, improbable as anything, Mr. Chen is back with part of the lead again. Let's take a look at where it all turned around. This was the shot at the fifth hole. It was his third shot. Having pushed the fourth, and there he was. He hit it twice. It hurts every time we see it. And while he almost sunk the next one for a six, it didn't, and he ended up with a quadruple eight, and that changed the whole situation here at Oakland Hills. Then Andy North, he had put his tee shot once again off the fairway, and this was his second shot into this difficult par four green. Well, it wasn't a heck of a shot because it went into that bunker. But 
Now, Andy has been a very good bunker player throughout this week, but this one got away. So Andy lost the lead there. Dave Barr now, who's been lurking all day. This was his third shot at the par 5 12th hole. And with this birdie putt. two-shot lead but he subsequently went on to bogey and now Mr. Chen has tied him live again now. live again now with Andy North one shot behind the co-leaders bar and Chen 13th hole par 3 172 yards five iron we're told and just as suddenly he says oh yeah you think I'm finished? Well, Not that quite. For, for one of the few good swings that uh, Andy's made today. Videotape now. Just moments ago, this was Mr. Chen. And as you saw, he didn't like it at all. Bob Rosberg's with him. Exactly what is his situation? Well, sorry, Bob, we got to... Take a look at Dave Barr. David's second shot at 14. Not um, bad. Hmm? I couldn't tell whether he liked it. <laughs> I'm not too sure. He he was sure, but it's on the green. We saw Payne Stewart and Lanny Watkins both bogey the 14th hole. Beginning to look like a five-man race, certainly at least that much at this point. Barr, Chen, North, Stewart, Watson, and maybe Watkins. This ABC Sports exclusive is being brought to you by U.S. F&G Insurance. Protecting your business, home, auto, and life all across the USA. And by the Wall Street Journal, the daily diary of the American dream. We're looking at Andy North, one shot behind the leaders, Chen and Barr. There's the leaderboard at the moment. Payne Stewart, Dennis Watson, and Lanny Watkins. But for them, the holes are running out. Yeah, but Payne has played 16. The water hole. Nice stroke, Andy. What a lovely stroke. Half for the lead. Three-man exequio now. Dave Barr, Che Chung Chen, and Andy North. Dave Barr's putty. Ooh, 14. It's about where Lanny was a while ago. Just a few moments ago at 17, Payne Stewart. I can tell you, it gets a little tense oh, yes. now. <laughs> In the last hour of competition, there's the 16th, beautiful water hole and a difficult marvelous hole and next to it the 17th tee and on up to this marvelous par three Dennis Watson at the 16th needing this to stay even and he finally hit a fairway. He certainly did at 14. 
That's a tremendous drive. Maybe he discovered something, hmm? It must be so annoying when you can't correct. Huh? <laughs> annoying what? is not quite the word that you might use if you ask the US Open. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Has anybody else in open history ever suffered a quadruple bogey and then regained a share of the lead? Difficulty. That one is not too good, Jack. I wonder I if he has a swing at all. I believe he's going to have a very restricted backswing. Yeah. And deep rough, too. Dennis Watson, incidentally, made the par at 16 and remains even. <clears throat> right in there too, Jack. That wasn't like the one at the hole before they wiggled in. Three leaders now, North Bar and Chen, with Andy North in the fairway at 14 and Chen perhaps in trouble. There'll be a few players waiting around to see the the last group come in, don't you think? <laughs> I'm sure, a lot of people who were about to turn off <laughs> at the early part of this round, <laughs> or if they did and went out to play or something, they've come back and... <laughs> what's happened? <laughs> this is Dennis Watson. Par 3, 17 uphill. He has in his hands a two iron. Jack, I've been told that Dennis has gotten the ball up and down from missing the green nine times today. Oh my. That takes some nerves, doesn't it? His bunker shot on the last hole lit, lit the cup oh, before oh, it oh. went eight feet by. my dear Watson. Good shot. We may have another one in contention here at the moment. So we look at Dave Barr. I wonder if the group ahead of him hasn't played yet or it seems that it's taking a little bit of time there. They've already played. But it's no time to get too speedy. Make your mind up. It's a layup hole, but just which club to lay up with. You see the people outside the fence there, <laughs> staring in as we look at Chen and his uh, problem. Uh, about, well, let's get Dave Barr's shot first. Oh. Playing up with an iron. Right. Fairway trap in the middle of this fairway. It seems they stay in the fairway. Barely. Payne Stewart at 18. Nice bounce. Great drive there. Right over those traps. And out into the fairway. Now, Bob Rosberg, how's the lie, et cetera, et cetera? The lie isn't very, the lie isn't very good, and the swing is not very good. Now, he's got a little slot in the trees there that he can take the club up, but if you swing it too hard and too far back, you're going to get it caught up in the tree. I doubt if he can get to the green out of this lie. If he had a good, clean lie, he might be able to. But even downwind, he's going to have to run the ball quite a ways to get it there. It's a very, very difficult shot. As you can see, he's bending over a lot more than his natural swing so that the club won't get too high in his backswing. Plus, he's choked up quite a bit on it, Bob. Well, I 
tell you, he, uh, I don't know whether he shanked it or whether it just came out straight right. It came out straight right, bounced off the tree ahead of him and kicked right out in the middle of the fairway. So, <laughs> right in the middle of the fairway. That was the luck of the Irish, huh? Well, he, he gave it all back in one little he stretch sure there. Did. Maybe, you know, that time something good happened to him. I agree with you. There he is, and here's Payne Stewart at the 18th. No. This might be the most important shot of his life. Could hear someone say hurry, but quite a bit away. Yes. Tell me that pin position is the same one that was there in 1950, which, of course, Ben Hogan would have loved, wouldn't he? <laughs> Bring it in left to right. The wind blowing that way today, too. Andy North. Earlier. With the seven iron. Seemed to hit the fringe there and check up a little. Well, with a seven, he got a little mm -hmm. more stuff on it. The ball was still moving. Maybe he needed one more club, but that's uh, on the green, okay. Three leaders. With Payne Stewart walking up 18. And some other scores. He's looking at that scoreboard, and he sure is. <laughs> Just in case you think the players don't want to know. The Fuzzy Zeller and Payne Stewart. This is Lanny at 17. Hit it. And he'll have to work for par. Well, that's not quite the effort I would expect from Lanny because he's so aggressive. And uh, at this point, I know the most important thing to him is winning this tournament, not where you finish down the list. Earlier, Sik Chung Chen. Third shot at 14, par four. Now Dave Barr. The 15th, second shot, four iron. And he's not there. That's so much depends on that line. The only mm -hmm. good news there is he's pitching up the hill a little bit. Of course, Dave knows, Andy knows, and TC knows, you par in from where you are, and you're probably going to win. Now, can you do it? <laughs> of course, a birdie along the way, and they're obviously trying to make birdies, but 278 really looks good. Dennis Watson. Dennis Watson at the 17th. This is for birdie. He goes 2-3, birdie, birdie. That would be 278. Stay up. Stay up. Oh, just drifted down, didn't it? Oh, my. That would have put him within one of the lead. Now we have Chen on the left and Payne on the right. Same kind of thing here with Payne, Jack. Uh, you know, it's not how you finish in the top 10 or what in the U.S. Open. It's one in a tournament. Now, if he's going to have a chance to win, he's got to give this a run. He's putting up over the big left to right break. As I said, he's got to take a run at it. <laughs> 
kind of those greens slowed up. No, sometimes your nerves slow up. <laughs> now, Chen. Run in. Slow down. Slow down. That's very quick by that hole. Whatever happens, he'll be a lot tougher player next time he plays. Marvelously how he kept his outward composure anyway. Hmm? I don't know what's going on inside him, but he really was a not too noticeable. A difference from when he was leading the tournament by four shots and when he had his tragedy at the fifth hole. Andy North. Not bad. If you hit it a little firm there, it's very slick by the hole there. Played two good holes in a row. It's a good iron shot at 13 and in the fairway at uh, 14 and yep. on the green. <laughs> this could be an important putt. To have any chance, I would think he's got to make this. bar on the left at the 15. Just about pin high, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. If he's got a good lie, though, it's it. Sometimes the shot uh, you might pitch in. Mm -hmm. Oh, he had that in mind, didn't he? Yeah, but maybe now he wishes he didn't have that in mind. Well, Chen just made bogey, so he drops to one. And now it's Stewart for par to stay even. Oh, dear. Yeah, three putts there. And Payne Stewart finishes at one over. Still a good round and a good tournament. He's a good young player. And Fuzzy there, of course, defending champion. He's been a great champion out there. Well, indeed he has. Well, that's the best score posted so far. As we look back at the 15th tee. Andy North tied with Dave Barr at two under. It's a three wood. Just when he needed it, he gets his swing Getting back on back. track. And I was going to say, his whole demeanor is different, isn't it? But than it was in the early holes. He looked like he was almost lackadaisical. He's very intense now. <laughs> <laughs> the lead of the open will make you a little bit intense, Jack. What a story he has contributed to United States Open lore. Say Chung Chen. <laughs> done. Now here's a putt for Dave Barr to hold part of the lead. Now he has some idea of what it may do because of the chip going by the hole. I'm sure he watched it go by. Yeah. Good. Good going, Very good point and it's safely in and we still have co-leaders Andy North and Dave Barr. We'll be back. 
So that's how it is. Andy North and Dave Barr, two under par. And if you go back just four days, they would probably have been two of the most unlikely candidates to be there at the top of the leaderboard, or indeed the other three names that are alongside them. Such is golf, such is the magic of the championships. Whether it be the British or the United States Open Championships, it is just that, as Jim said at the beginning of the championship, it's open. Looking back behind the 15th green, Mr. Chen, whose the wheels have come off a bit, but can he finish well? Just under 400 yards. Beautiful shot. Looks good. Oh, Bob, it's a super shot. It's pulling back. A little unlucky. Played a five iron there. And it's jumped back at least seven or eight feet. Dave Barr on the 16th. Yeah. He's to crack it up the right-hand side of the fairway. The flag today in a punishing spot on the right-hand side of the green. And Dave Barr is in position A. Over the water he has to go. And the flag in that right-hand little corner. Andy North, joint leader, second to the 15th. Chen is quite close, might have been closer. Stroke behind. Andy North has been in, must have been six or seven or even more bunkers. He's only hit about two or three drives well, but uh, he's managed, as many a handicap golfer can do, to hit the middle irons, those short clubs with the loft. He's managed to hit a few good ones, and he's shown tremendous courage. Joint leader, can he finish well? Oh, unlucky. Again, right on target. Another 10 or 12 feet, and that would have been stone dead. Very good playing indeed. Dennis Watson at the 18th. Now, he had a chance at the last hole. Just shaved it. Even par. This last hole, 453 yards. And it's a good shot. Now, he could spin back. Here it goes. Now, how far will it travel? Yes, if you'd only been a shot less and if you could hold that what tales you might be able to tell. And who knows, you may still be able to tell. Dave Barr there on the right, Andy North on the left. The joint leaders. Coming up next, by the way, Peter, on many of these ABC stations, ABC's World News Sunday with Sam Donaldson. And that's going to be followed immediately by an ABC News special presentation Hostage flight TWA 847 with Peter Jennings. That'll be, of course, the latest information on the hostage situation and a complete wrap-up of the weekend's events. That's immediately following World News Sunday this evening at 7 o'clock Eastern Time. Peter. Thank you, Jim. And, of course, although the events here are in the sporting world important, there are, as we always know, there are far more important things going on in the world. And our thoughts are with those dear people in the hijacked plane. Some scores for you to look at. 18th green now, and Dennis Watson, who won three events on the tour last year. A huge amount of money. And here he is with a putt that would take him to one under par. And he, if he gets it, will have completed his round. The other players will have three or four holes to go. Ooh, and I don't know, it gets your old nerve ends tingling particularly as I've drawn him in the ABC swindle, if, um, if he pops this in, I might be having a glass of sherbet tonight. Who knows? But he would set the target. If this goes in, Watson would be one under par, and that would be a very good and stern target to set. But, of course, he's, he's got to hold it. He had a chance on the last, after a very good tee shot, and looked as if he'd hold it but it didn't go in and this is a very testy little putt quick and quite a little bit of swing now is he going to be is that club going to be a pal to him no he's not oh that was a 
squeaky one, wasn't it? That was a last green open putt, if ever I saw one. A tentative prod. Uh, Dennis Watson, who had the two-stroke penalty, remember? Which I must confess to my dear friends at the USGA, I think that's a hard rule. And the RNA, I think that might be reviewed. Fancy finishing even par with two with a two-shot penalty when uh, the leaders are only two under par. I wonder what his thoughts will be. Andy North, this for a par. Prods it in with his very individualistic putting style and stays at two under. Joint leader with Dave Barr. Here he is, Dave Barr. 16th hole. Good position on the fairway, but this really is a, oh, a frightening second if you go at the pin. Got through it well. Got to be a pretty neat swing. And a very neat shot. Oh! oh the nerve ends were a bit raw there. Stage head, 15th green. He deserves one. Got a little bit of a slope to go up. Maybe more of a gentle rise of 10 inches or so. not happening when he, when he needed one most but what an experience for the young fellow man I suppose it was a bit too much to hope but uh, things do happen if you're as old as me you remember a young man called Cassius Clay against Sonny Liston he had no hope at all but one we mentioned Trevino winning all those years ago is it really 17 years who knows this man might still do it this is powerful. Yes, he gets it in. He stays one behind the leaders. There's still a few holes to go. Don't go far away. Wisconsin for Andy North, or Old Canada for Dave Barr, or a little oil for the lamps of Taiwan with Se Chung Chen. We don't know because the U.S. Open is up for grabs. It has returned to being the wide open. Just when it seemed earlier this afternoon that Se Chung Chen had it all wrapped up, ready to put it in his pocket, he came up with a quadruple bogey, bogey on the fifth hole, then took three more bogeys in succession, lost seven strokes to par in four holes, seemed to be out of it. He came back, steadied, but it's Barr and North right now. Chen won behind. Any one of the three could win, or we could have a playoff at 18 holes tomorrow. Wind is up a little more. It's getting chilly here in the middle of June. Feels like football weather, not the U.S. Open. <laughs> Dave Barr from the western part of Canada, out near Vancouver. Never was on track there, Jim. No, no, but not hit solid. When you see it bounce, usually you don't hit it solid, and it doesn't get to the hole. Almost never goes in the hole if you see it bouncing up there, does it? Remember, the great Byron Nelson used to point that out. Hope he's watching with us today. Andy North. This was his tee shot on the 16th, the same hole that Barr is playing. He's back on the tee as he hits this. And the tee shot suddenly seems to have steadied a bit, Dave. Just in time, I might add. He was pulling them all to the left earlier, and hooking them. It's just, it could be one of those funny lies, too, Dave. It's right on the edge of the rough, you know. I'm sure Rossi's down there, and he can we'll tell get us that. what he's got. Yep. He really has a pretty good lie. The ball did get in the edge of the rough, but I don't think it's going to bother him. In fact, going into the wind, uh, it'll make the ball go forward just a little, and that certainly doesn't hurt with that lake in front. Of course, you've got to guard against the bunker and back. It's not one of those things up against the collar of the rough. 
Mr. Chen. Let out a little shaft in that one. Yes, indeed. Gorgeous shot. Yeah, that's really in the correct side of the fairway, the mm -hmm. right side. Rossi, how long a shot does Andy have where he is, would you say? I would say Andy's 155 yards, Dave. Uh, the wind is uh, gusting a little right now. It, right now, it's not blowing uh, at all. But uh, I think it will be before he gets ready to shoot. It's, it's coming up and going down uh, just every couple of seconds. Very tough playing conditions out here. They saw Dave Barr rattle it around the cup in for the part. We move on to the 17th hole, beginning to run out of holes now. Yeah, but he's by the 16th hole. That's right. That's right. As we said earlier, in the final round, the final nine holes, particularly the U.S. Open, the holes ahead of you do not present so much a birdie opportunity as trouble or potential trouble. Definitely with a capital T. Well, there's Andy North from high overhead. Started the day two behind. Now tie for the lead. You must see that water a little more, don't you, in the last round of the Open than you on another occasion? You're definitely aware of it, but as Bob pointed out, you're not a whole lot better off in that. Well, you are a little bit better off in that back bunker. This is a whole... It really requires the proper club and a good shot. That's why it's an all-American hole. Anytime you see a 16th hole pick or a par four like this. And if you miss, make it go left. That one's left. Well left. Yes, it is. Well, he knows that putt. If you remember yesterday, he yeah, made a not did it over from over there. Now to the 17th tee and Dave Barr. This last par three on the course. 201 yards. Judy Rankin with Dave Barr. Is the wind gusty over there, Judy? It's pretty quiet right at the moment, Jim. Is it? I tell you, he's just been a master today at keeping his concentration. He hasn't let a bogey bother him. And um, I think he might bring it in. So the way he pushed that grass down with his foot, you can do that on the tee. But don't oh, try that anyplace else on the golf well, He's also <laughs> stepping back here. He might just be taking a little look and see what's going on over at 16, which is just to his left. Well, they tell us he's considering a three iron right now. He's become much more deliberate choosing his clubs the last three or four holes. Here's the drama all in one picture. Bar on the left of your screen, and he looks back over to 16. Where he knows that Andy North is with Si Chung Chen. Up there on 18, very gusty up on the tower right now. But the wind's still down on 17. No, did not Hit like it. Hit it left, I think. Mm -hmm. Sit down, sir. Sit down, ball, he said. Well, well, that'll take a little concentration. Now the second shot of Tsi Chun Chen. Trailing by one shot. This is what he did on 16. That's as much emotion as I've seen from him. Yeah, look out. All right. It's on the putting surface. They're both safely on on 16. Dave Barr over on 17. A message from the USGA. There are the co-leaders. Dave Barr at 17, Andy North at 16. Dave has just overshot the green at 17, the par three, and Andy North has a putt of considerable distance. And I'm sure what he's thinking is get down in two. I'm sure that's what they're both thinking. Mm -hmm. He used to said that you'd, we hadn't seen it, that much emotion from Mr. Chen all, all week, and it's true, and we never saw that much emotion from Dave Barr either, so <laughs> the lemon is getting squeezed, isn't it? Feel like a fish on a bank up there sometimes, Jack, trying to get a breath of air. Just please be still my heart. Andy North. 
at those eyes. with those long cuts. That's outstanding. Perfect pace there. Check how good your nerves are to do that. <laughs> oh. And here are some scores in alphabetical order so you can pick out your friends and uncles and relatives. Fathers and Father's oh, Day. Yes. Rick Fair. A marvelous open for him. Could be very important to him to get him back in this tournament for mm -hmm. next year if he yes. finishes in the top 15 or get an invitation to the Masters possibly if you're in the top 16. Maybe he'll only play majors the rest of his life. <laughs> <laughs> well, unless he qualifies at the school, that's what he's going to have to do. Dave Barr now at 17. And from where he is, he can see what Andy did back mm -hmm. in 16. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's well aware of the situation. Oh, he's going to softly put it down. What is well, that? He might, he might not have had any choice but to do that because of the ridge that runs down the center of that green. I was a little surprised, too, trying that shot at, at this moment. Now over at 16, Che Chung Chen. more. And we'll take another look at that shot, David Barr. He may not have been able to play a, a run shot here, uh, Jack. The screen, big slope from his left to right. And that fringe, if you see, comes down into part of it there. He just didn't throw it far enough for sure, though. Oh, dear. What a sh par, uh, putt now for Parr. And once again, we look at Dave Barr. Tell Dennis Watson not to leave just yet. <laughs> Here are some more scores by alphabetical order. Andy for par. Seventeenth, where they will look up at David Barr. Imagine he feels very lonely at this moment. They all do, Jack. Mm -hmm. Just you and your caddy out there. Mm -hmm. Bogey. 
drops into one under. Judy, was that the reason you think that Dave gave that he hit that kind of a shot there? Did you see the lie? I tell you, his lie really wasn't too bad, but the severe undulation, the big hump between self and the it. hole was his real problem. I'm surprised he didn't try to run the ball over it and play a big break. Now the leader by himself once again. Mm. Well, he's been there before, so of the ones with a chance to win, he's the ones that are left on the course. He's the only one that's been there. Consultation with his caddy. I thought what he said to the caddy was good four. Better be a very good four. <laughs> David, one thing about that ball, it's really not in too bad a spot to play a bunker shot. It's well short of the hole. He'd be blasting it up the green and sort of into the wind. And uh, he has that hump behind the hole, too. If it goes too far, it can't go much past 12, 15 feet. Unless he does it like he did at 11, Bobby. The last bunker shot he had, he uh, got a little clean. Well, that, uh, that would not be too good here. Oh, well, I don't know how long his memory is. You know, sometimes people's memories are longer than others. I tell you, I think you were right. I think he had to hit that floor awful hard. Well, if, the, if that's what he, in fact, said, I think that's what he said to the caddy. And that's what he hit for. Oh, it was? Now it's, uh... <laughs> Jen's back in the ball game. Uh -huh. See? It looks a little left. Yeah, it's. I tell you, it's not a good plot over there. That is a bad spot. It's almost on the same line Dave was a moment ago, but except he was back in the tall grass, and that is a severe left to right break there. Maybe insofar as you have to put up through the fringe, Jim, Jack. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, the world, the real world, goes on. ABC News will have a special program this evening at 7 o'clock Eastern Time, immediately following ABC News World News tonight, Sunday. Hostage flight, TWA, 847. Peter Jennings will be the host. Back here at Oakland Hills, Dave Barr, 18th T. It looked like he was trying to send it out over those traps. And he didn't make it, did he? No, no. Of all the places to put it, it sometimes you may panic a little bit, but he, he just got to pull himself together and make a four here somehow. I wonder if he knows, like he doesn't know, I guess, that Andy has put his in the bunker at 17. No, but he does know that if he makes a five, he's, yeah. he's really cut, his, <laughs> cut himself back. Well, that's the situation. Andy North in a bunker at 17. Judy, have you taken, can you 
tell us about Dave Barr's tee shot? Well, the lie isn't the best, and I think he's going to have a very difficult stance. Mm -hmm. um, he can get the ball up over the lip, but I just don't know if he's going to be able to stand at the ball well enough to hit it. Well, he'll just hit it out of fairway, right, Judy? I mean, he's no well, chance he to get Well, he can certainly advance it towards the green, but I don't think he can hit the ball to the green. It's probably a shot of close to 190 yards. Now to 17 and Andy North. Who has an intimate knowledge of the bunkers at Oakland Hills. <laughs> like the Sandman today. Mm. He leads Dave Barr by one and Che Chung Chen by one. Feet above, ball tends to slide out going right. What a... Oh, my goodness! What a shot. Well, as Peter Alice said, his courage all day has been what's carried him to this point, and there you saw another evidence of it. Let's take another look. He knew it was good. Those cheers ringing in the ears of Dave Barr now at 18. He probably thinks he hold it out. Andy North hold it out. Yeah, and it hit the lip. Didn't it? Oh, kind of disappeared on us, didn't it? Look like he's really in deep on this next shot. Make another look. I guess then Judy was right about the stance, I guess. He just couldn't get enough onto it, hmm? Right. Now Chen at 17. I think he's got to go up near the fringe to the left there, to his left. Big swing to the right. Oh, that's difficult, isn't it? Hard to judge. Oh, it's still moving. Now you see what Dave Barr's problem was, yep. and he was back a little bit. On much the same line. This may be the only man left yeah. in red numbers here it in a minute. It could be that Andy would have a two-shot lead teeing off on 18. So did David Graham in 1979, though. Mm -hmm. When the PGA was held here. Next 25 minutes should be traumatic. There's Andy's scorecard. One birdie. But that was as good as a birdie there. <laughs> he made some pars yesterday that were like birdies, yeah. too. What a magnificent sand shot by Andy North here at 17 to hold him at two under. One more par four. You see him thinking about the tee shot? Mm hmm. About his turn? Chin to stay one under, and it's tough putt. Hurry. Hurry. Mar. All right. 
dead center too. Mm -hmm. We'll never know. Himself on the head, huh? He's had great composure today. When well, any other time, you might just want to run the head. Well, you think of Dennis Watson with a two-stroke penalty and uh, Chen with a quadruple bogey, and they're both around almost winning it, huh? Yeah. Dave's line doesn't look too bad, Jack, but he really needs to get this close. Yeah. You could hear him say, come down. Well, just off. Well, he knew what? that it flew. Uh -huh. You can feel that as soon as you hit it. looking at the scoreboard he's probably surprised that Andy made the par there and uh, TC made the bogey at 17. An exuberant crowd here at 18. Think how long a lot of them have waited up there at 18 for this next half hour. They're pretty good. Uh, also not making the cut here has been the sun. I mean the weather hasn't been particularly good for spectators last two days and uh, they've turned out in great numbers. Here's the 18th. Andy North has 453 yards to go for his second open championship. Mm. You win one, you could be lucky, but if you win two, there's got to be something there. Tough driving hole. Those bunkers that you see to the right there are definitely in play. You just saw Dave Barr there. It's against the wind, out of bounds to the left, trees on the right of the bunker. Looks like he started it out down the right, huh? Oh, what a time to come up with an A tee shot. That is grabbing your golf ball. And considering the way he drove it for 75, 80% of the round, that little white thing just back of his ball there when we come back to his ball is a, a little yardage indicator, and it's 196 to the center of the green from there. Jay Chung Chen at even. closing stages of the 85th U.S. Open Championship and the drama goes on and on and on. Dave Barr, fourth shot. He had glory in the palms of his hands and all he had to do was close his fingers and suddenly all the gold dribbled through. But, but, look at that, nestling down. This is his fourth shot and it's perilously fast down that hill. that had gone in because that means almost assuredly that Dave Barr is going to drop a stroke here at the last he's going to finish an even part tied with Dennis Watson who's already completed his round Chen Mr. Chen back down the fairway who's in trouble he's even and so much going on here and at the beginning of the week the old timers like Mr. Watson and Mr. Nicholas, have a look at it again here. But the old timers were saying that they thought a roundabout par would win. And when they were all doing six under and seven under and eight under, they said, no, no, no. But the 
course certainly and the nerves and the tension and the US Open certainly hasn't made breaking all those records any easier now here he is Dave Barr and his great moments this week this for a one over par five okay. there it is five for Dave Barr finishes at level par 70, 68, 70, 72, 280. That's very good playing indeed. So near and yet so far, tied with Dennis Watson, who will have certainly tales to tell his grandchildren about this Open Championship and back down the fairway, Andy North, who all those years ago, Denver, Cherry Hills, had a five to win. And under very trying conditions, he got that five. Now, what would you do, mates, if you were down there in the perfect position? Would you just hit a seven iron up the fairway? His partner today, his playing companion, young Mr. Chen, way over on the fairway. And it's, e it's uh, interesting to reflect that uh, over the last two rounds, that Andy North has only had two birdies. And looking down our scoring sheets that have been kept by some very interesting young men over the last they've done a tremendous job the youngsters with our scoring this week it's interesting to see how many birdies so many of the other players have got but would you believe the leader in the championship at this moment Andy North has only had two in the last two rounds uh, Mr. Chen just uh, dropped there yes well move that old dog end out of the way and here we go and he's found a reasonable place now he is even He's even par. Dave Barr has finished. Dennis Watson has finished. So Chen needs to get down in three from here to tie with them. If he should secure a small miracle and crack it up on the green and hold a putt for a three, it would mean that Andy North can't afford to hang around. But I think at this moment I would rather be Mr. North than Mr. Chen. It's been a fascinating week's championship. Some would say that the course hasn't been as punishing as it might have been. But at the end of the day, the winner is not going to be many under par, if any. Now, here's a young man who took eight, hit the ball twice at the fifth, five, six, seven. He had a horrendous time. And all congratulations to him for keeping things going. Now, can he carry this ball up onto this 18th green? Ten bar. Jim Carter! Well, a lot of noise, but uh, there you see the result. And that was a very difficult shot, wasn't it, Bob? Yes, uh, Peter. I don't think he could have gotten it there with an iron... Uh, you know, I, he only carries a driver and a three wood, and I don't think he really had a shot. Uh, he had a club for the shot. Now, what about this young man? Here, Bob, here he is. He uh, wants a five to win. What do you think? Well, I think he's just got to take enough club to get it over the bunkers. Of course, David Graham did that in 79 and made six, so I don't know about that. <laughs> But you wouldn't mind stepping in there right now, Bob, would you? And, and running the risk of getting down in four more from here for the championship? I'd like to take that risk. Oh, indeed. Here we go. Andy North, second, the 72nd hole. Leader by two. Hit it heavy. Straight. Oh, and it's not over yet. He's stuck on the bank. And I must say one thing for Andy North, when you remember him at Denver he did really make a sweat right down to the wire let's go over to Jim well Peter up here at 18 is the chill of early evening the flag a little bit limper than it was the wind has died down that's no factor anymore because the last two players on the course are about to approach the green they'll be using short clubs the pitching wedge or a sand wedge for Andy North a sand wedge certainly for the man from Taiwan is this the walk to victory well a moment ago we thought that was certain and it still appears most likely because if he gets the ball on in three he still has two putts for a five to win this championship it's interesting that one way or another the rules of golf will be involved in the decision of the 1985 US Open well they're greeting them both you can be sure
Here comes Andy. Seven years after Cherry Hill. After all the injuries, all the disappointments, Andy North should win his second U.S. Open. It's only the third tournament that he will have won in his professional career. Seven years ago, he had very much the same situation to win, Cherry Hills. Here was his third shot at that time. You can see the wind was blowing well, strong. Well, you know, Jim, yeah. or, uh, you know, and how do you control yourself? That was Dave talking at the time. So similar, so similar. But on this occasion, he left it in the bunker. Now, he does not have a bunker in front of him to come up onto the green this time. But he is just about as far from the flagstick as he was at Cherry Hills. Just when all seemed safely in, he hit that bad shot. Similarity, too. You had two very hard finishing holes. 18 at Cherry Hills is a, a tough hole. and But as you point out, there's no bunker between him and the hole there. And all he needs to do is just loft it on the front of the green. should be able to get down in two from there, but he's going to have to make sure of it. And the North, he started to say the rules of golf are involved in the decision here one way or another. We had Dennis Watson, who incurred a two-stroke penalty. Were it not for that, he would be tied for the lead right now, and assuming Andy makes the five, Dennis would have been a stroke ahead. And, of course, Mr. Chen, by hitting the ball twice with one stroke, incurred a one-stroke penalty. Well, let's not count Mr. Chen out here. He's got one last little chance if he should happen to make this shot. Now Andy's got to make his to win. Well struck with looking shot. Oh, oh, oh! What an ending for the U.S. Open, and it's not quite over. It's not quite over yet. This man can take nothing but glory back home to Taiwan. Ji Chung Chen with the heart of a lion. This for the par four, which will give him a round of 77. Seven over par today. The bulk of that, well, all of that incurred on a string of four holes. Yeah. Went four over in one hole, then take three bogeys in a row after I think that. he kind of wonders what to do, and what he should do, really, is go ahead and finish. That's what he was asking Andy at this point, because the um, crowd is really waiting for Andy at this point, now that Chen didn't make his. Pretty good little bunker shot. We've seen an awful lot of oh. different kinds of shots here. All right. For a round of 77, he comes in at even par and is tied for second place with Dave Barr of Canada and Dennis Watson of South Africa. Three foreign golfers tying for second, it appears, in the United States Open. But now it's time, it appears, for Happy Father's Day for Andy North, father of two daughters 11 and 7 years old if he gets down in two putts he wins just as he did seven years ago the only other tournament he's ever won as a pro is the Westchester Classic in 1977 but this will be two US Opens
there sits the championship a few inches away. seven-year drought, not after you hit every bunker on the golf course, it seems, not, not after it seems you've lost it and have to come back again, never give up, and Andy North didn't. Al Menger to play professional here. John Marsh from the USGA there with the TC. Andy with a final round of 74 wins the United States Open. 7 o'clock this evening, the hostage crisis unfortunately goes on. A special program, Hostage Flight TWA 847. Peter Jennings will be the host at 7 o'clock Eastern Time. Well, it has been a long and nervous afternoon at the Open, and we'll be back again. We return to Oakland Hills, where Andy North of the United States and Madison, Wisconsin, has just won his second United States Open Golf Championship. We're going to be standing by, and we'll stay for a word with the champion. Meanwhile, here is the way they finished. Andy North just by one over Dennis Watson of South Africa, Dave Barr of Canada, and Se Chung Chen of Taiwan, and Seve Ballesteros of Spain at one over par. And the others you saw, Johnny Miller, former winner there. Fuzzy Zeller, the defender, had a good championship at three over par. Corey Pavin and Jack Brenner. Rick Fair, the rookie pro who tied for low amateur last year. Greg Norman of Australia, who tied for this championship last year. Andy Bean and Don Foley, who's the low stroke leader, believe it or not, on the PGA Tour. Ray Floyd sank a little bit today. And that's the way it was. Coverage of the 85th United States Open Golf Championship has been brought to you by the investment firm of Smith Barney. They make money the old-fashioned way. They earn it. By Spalding, top flight golf balls and cannon clubs from Spalding, the winning combination. By Lincoln and from the makers of Lincoln Town Car, Continental and Mark 7. Lincoln, what a luxury car should be. And by Allied Corporation, our advanced technology may be complex, but the results are often quite simple. As I said, however, we're not finished here yet. We're going to have a word with Andy North, the winner. As soon as he has checked his scorecard, that's his responsibility. Checked it carefully and make sure that all the scores are correct. First, a message from the USGA. In just a half an hour later, developments on the hostage situation, a special program, hostage flight, TWA 847 at 7 o'clock Eastern on ABC. Peter Jennings will be the host for ABC News. Here, it's a happy day for Andy North. And for all of us who have been working on this program, including our producer, Chuck Howard, our directors, Terry Jastrow and Jim Jeanette, our update unit director, Bob Rosberg, Jr., the technical directors, Werner Gunther, Gary Larkins, and Bob Bernthal, our associate producers, Ben Harvey and Barbara Donahue, associate directors, Jack Graham and Ned Simon, Technical manager Bob Armbruster, Jeff Felger, and Bill Freiberger, and all the others. Now, let's go down to Greenside at the 18th and Jack Whittaker. Well, Jim, I've got a very elated but exhausted Andy North here. Andy, if you can win the Open once, you might be lucky, but if you win it twice, you've got to have a lot of talent. Well, that was, I was awfully fortunate that I didn't play very well. I drove in the rough every hole, it seemed like, and I started hitting some better shots toward the end, but... You know, it's, maybe get some of these guys off my back about what have I done lately. So, you know, it's, it's, it's great to finally win, going through the years like I have the last three. You start wondering if you're ever going to win again, and it's, you know, it's awfully nice to do it. Well, I think you gave us all an object lesson in courage. When, when you got the lead after that quadruple bogey, your driver was letting you down, your tee ball, but you never gave up. Well, my rhythm wasn't very good today, and, you know, I don't know if it was just, you know, a little overexcited. I just never felt like I'd get calmed down, and... You know, you keep putting in the knee-high stuff every hole, eventually you're going to have some problems. And it caught up to me at, at 9, 10, 11. I hit some bad shots. But then I, I hit some better shots from there on and, and managed to make the birdie at the par 3, which was really a key turnaround. How about the sand shot at uh, 17? Well, 
I've been playing really well out of the bunkers all year, and I hit such a terrible shot at 11 that it was such an easy shot, and I got a little too cute trying to you know, really get it close. And it was nice to get another chance. I didn't want to put the ball left. I kind of told Mike, the kid's caddy for me, that I'm gonna, I want it on the right part of the green. Even in the bunker, it's a lot better than having it 50 feet going over that crest. And I hit a terrible shot, and it ended up I hit a great bunker shot. You certainly did hit a great bunker shot, and you were looking at it right now, I think. There it is. A very nice swing, and it almost goes in. Well, that would have been pretty neat. I mean, that would, I was very pleased to see it up there. I didn't have to mess with it. Well, I bet the people in Madison, Wisconsin are very happy dancing in the streets up there tonight. Well, it's, it's a great Father's Day, I'll tell you that. I know I made my father happy, and I made myself awfully happy. So, you know, it's nice. it'll be nice to get home. Congratulations, Andy. Thank, Thank you sure. so much. Okay. Jim? If you never understood the strain and the joy of the final round of the U.S. Open, you saw it on that face, the face of the new champion, Andy North. It's on Wisconsin. Coming up next on many of these ABC stations, ABC's World News Sunday, which will be followed immediately by the ABC News presentation, host hostage flight TWA 847 with Peter Jennings. The latest, of course, on the hostage situation and a complete wrap-up of the weekend's events. That's immediately following World News Sunday at 7 Eastern. Travel arrangements made through and a promotional fee paid by United Airlines. Flying is United's job and United is now serving 50 top cities in the United States. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, recognized around the world as the leader in sports television.